Hey, hello, how are you? Welcome to the Junkyard Love Podcast. It's me, your host, Dwayne The Rock Johnson's Stunt Double. I'm happy you're here. Today's episode is with Ryan Santos. This is his second appearance on the podcast. And uh, I thought I'd take the first few minutes of this to kind of explain where we landed in our conversation and kind of contrast where it where it changes and where it differs from maybe our first conversation and um, kind of the the mindset the mindset and the just place where we're coming from so the first episode was recorded before this pandemic it was recorded before the coronavirus the covid situation was was a thing right but before it had had really hit america and changed uh, you know with the lockdown and all the the political madness that goes with all of this all of these different changes that we've had to experience um you know being sent indoors and being sent inside psychologically in many ways um it's 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 changed how our conversations have been framed and so actually i wanted to kind of come on here in 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 express the importance of podcasts because of this because of this contrast that i noticed listening back to this episode it's crazy you know as much as i try to as a host i don't want to take a bunch of covid talk and and run run the whole podcast um talking about the coronavirus like i I try to try to step us away from it where i can or or, you know oh we've been talking about too much like let's get it's here it's a thing we're all dealing with right we're all kind of experiencing some sort of difference in our life um and it's it's the first part of conversation it's where we meet each other at often and so it's interesting to uh, for this episode we we did carry on a, a lot about kind of our our personal experiences over the last year. And uh, it was actually turned into quite a beautiful conversation around um, dealing with this craziness, dealing with these changing times, dealing with um, not knowing where to get our truth from, dealing with uh, the suffering um, that we're all kind of going through, but we don't really know how to express it. We don't really know how to, to show up as our best selves. We're all really just kind of kind of going through this rocky time um, without the ability to properly communicate about it. Um, you know, it's, it's very interesting to me that, you know, not just because of the lockdown, but because of the things that seem to be attached to the lockdown and the, and the, the censorship and, and these sorts of things, there's legitimately a chance that this episode will be removed from YouTube and Spotify and Apple Music for false information. And um, I mean, really noticing how crazy that is how how um not not adhering to freedom of speech that that really is uh but you know it's something that we're all kind of going through it's something that we're all kind of experiencing in this you know ryan opens up his his ability to be so vulnerable with me on this podcast is is quite fantastic he opens up and just kind of is is expressing at some point you know I, I don't know what to say. I don't know if I'm going to get canceled. I don't know if I'm going to get in trouble. I don't know how to properly communicate this. I feel like we're not allowed to. I feel like everything we say is right on the edge of some giant argument. Uh, we don't know what news sources the other person across the table has been listening to. Um, we're dealing with clashes amongst our family members in our communities with our friends. Uh, a lot of headbutting from narratives that aren't really our narratives. We're kind of trying to explore our lived experience and check in on the bigger global narrative and see where we fit in it. And I think a lot of us are finding that we don't really know where our opinions are. and We don't know if we're like really allowed to have our opinions somehow. Um, it's a very strange time. And uh, I think that us going through this this in-depth conversation the first hour and a half is this is kind of where we landed just just the weirdness of all this and and how we don't feel as if we can communicate fully and and we're just confused and um you know emotional and and uh the the beauty of this podcast is you know i i've had a couple of these really where I want to, I have my serious episodes. I have my, my episodes where we talk about childhood trauma and we, and we talk about, um, growing out of, of lack mindsets and, and growing into fixed mindsets and I have motivational talks and I have, um, you know, episodes that I, that I go into it and I'm like, we're going to, we're going to dive into this self-help stuff. We're going to dive into the self-development because I really want to just try to mind this person for what they know, because if I can set the stage for them to say the proper things, it really will help the listeners. And then there's also this other side of the podcast that I, that I want to just be able to have open 
bullshitting conversations really I, I want to be able to have you know not not dipping our toes in, into gossip and in talking about others but you know even just in the casual you know bros hanging out shooting the shit having a beer that stumbles into into awesome awesome sides of of our of our personality and, and of our perspective so I I, re- I went into this episode I had Ryan come over to my home um, we didn't do the zoom call you know it, it was like dude come over I was like I'll get a six pack um, you know, we, we figured we'd just BS, hang out for hours, see where it goes. Um, we'd crack some jokes, we'd laugh, whatever. But the again, the beauty of the podcast is it sets the stage for for like what's really going on. You know, you, you can't tiptoe around the bullshit. You, you know, it's um, we we end up just opening up to each other. And, and, and what you're able to see in here as a listener is you know, you're kind of getting a, a third person view, uh, uh, like, a, you know, we, we put up a camera as you're watching two good friends, um, speak frankly with each other. You're, you're kind of getting in on this, like brotherly love, this, um, this vulnerability that, you know, you, you know, it's, it's not locker room talk. It's, uh, it's, it's kind of th- these real states of, of friendship that you get to kind of see, see, and, in in man, to me, that's just so phenomenally, phenomenally beautiful and, um, and, uh, priceless really, uh, for me. So, so, so as a host, I just, I just, I want to preface this episode and, uh, just say, I'm so glad that it happened the way that it did. I'm so glad. Uh, like, I, I think that we both said and uncovered things that will be helpful, uh, for sure are helpful to, to, to some listeners, to some people going through similar experiences. You know, as much as I want to, you know, I always say, uh, uh, you know, sometimes you got to lift up your feet and, and let the river just kind of take you down it. Uh, th- this was one of those experiences where I'm like, this is an episode. We're not gonna talk about anything serious. We're going to just come over me and Ryan are just going to have a few beers and, and get a little buzzed and, and bullshit and, and hopefully crack a few jokes. And, and that's what this episode will be. And, and uh, it did have that for sure. Uh, we certainly do. We, we have our moments for sure. And, and, and the whole last end is, is all is pretty fun and games, but, uh, um, we, we, we ended up, not being able, you know, I, I, I kind of had to lift my legs up, you know, just, it just inevitably, we, we went to this place where it just seemed important to, to keep kind of digging in and, and having that conversation with my good friend. So I'm, I'm grateful for this podcast. I'm grateful for the things that it opens up. Um, I, I'm grateful for, for vulnerability and, uh, and really just the ability to, to try to, to stumble our way through this thing. And, uh, you know, just this, the, 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 the powerful, the powerful things that, a, that, a, you know, one conversation with inquisitiveness and, and, and respect and, and love for the other person can really help us, um, explore what's, what's eating us up and, and explore what's, what's on our minds and help us kind of work through it. So, um, yeah, I, uh, we'll get going with the podcast. I'm glad you guys are here. I'm glad you're listening. Uh, I, I appreciate you. If, if you resonate with any of this, um, you know, maybe, maybe send, send us a message or, or, or leave a comment or share or, you know, maybe just keep it to yourself. I get that too. So uh, if this does resonate with you and it does speak to you, um, just know that you're not alone. Um, just know that we, we're all going through some form of, of weirdness right now for sure. And none of us are claiming to have it figured out. None of us are claiming to... Um, be, be the ones with all the right answers. Um, but, but, I, but I think that openly speaking about it and not being afraid to speak about it, um, especially as that's something that's coming up with these, um, social media platforms now, now canceling and, and, and picking what truth is, is it's very, very, very weird time. Um, it's a, especially a very weird time to have public conversations like this, um, with, with, you know, some, some obtuse opinions and some vulnerability and some, some honest truths. So, um, yeah. I hope you enjoy the episode. It is me and Ryan Tos Santos. Enjoy. Knowledge is power. Reality is... But yeah, it... Uh, it works. I mean, it's not like uh, I'm literally still using. I'm using iMovie 
for which my, is like dude is like the basic old and it's it's slow like i i don't think i'm gonna be able to use imovie for super long like if i keep doing more of these where i'm uploading quite a bit of video yeah. it doesn't it starts to lag after a bit oh it does it really yeah i mean it, my computer is built for djing my, my computer is oh, built like oh okay you know what i mean like like it, my computer's pretty maxed out with my like music production and DJing and stuff yeah. and throwing video onto it is like a whole nother. It's like, holy fuck, dude, how much are you going to overload me with? You know, my computer starts to oh, get really? pissed at me a little bit. So Okay. Yeah. Cause I like made like a funny little, uh, 30, I don't even know if it was 30 seconds, but it was like 15 seconds or something. Oh, it was probably 30 yeah. seconds. I put some background music and it was me. Uh, it was like, I, for some reason, I got off at work early, and I was, like, really bored, and I didn't feel like doing anything. Like, I didn't feel like playing video games or, like, a, a video game or mm -hmm. anything. I was just, like, messing around with... Or I was just looking at iMovie. So I kind of, like, looked at it, and I'm like, okay. And I, and I was, like, not... I was basically teaching myself how to use it. And I made, like, a 30-second, like video of me having one of my cats on my chest and i put this like soothing like a commercial music in the background you know yeah yeah it's almost like the the slow and i put in slow motion like the video clip nice and i sent it to katie and she's like what are you even doing <laughs> i'm a video editor <laughs> yeah this was like two years ago or something and i was like i don't know but i think i should start making commercials it's fun yeah it's fun i mean like i don't know i love commercials i love watching them like yeah. i will actually if it's like a, you know the have you ever seen the um the gum one i think it's the, one? the one where like the mom or the, not the mom but the dad and the daughter they make the paper or the or origami no i don't think i seen it you they to make it. or like they make origami they're like first okay let, let me set the scene they're on a train yeah. okay they're like having like a daddy daughter trip right they're Got just it. hanging out and the girl's pretty young and but this guy i, I don't know what company it is i keep forgetting what company but they make origami right and that's their thing every time they have this piece of gum they make origami out of the wrapper okay okay so and then she gets a little bit older you know and they're just making origami every time they have that gum making origami and then later on towards the end of the video or the commercial this is like one of the long commercials whatever so they she's going away to college you know, she's leaving home. She's moving their pack in. And he's just oh. like, hey, you know, you can tell it's like he's really sad about it. And she's like, suit, whatever. And she's like, ready to go. And he is packing one of the boxes. She's like, what the heck? You know, what the heck is this box? And it, he, it like fell off like out of the back of the, or the car. Mm. And it spilled all the origami they mm. made since that first one. Wow. And after that, she looked up at him. And he's like, God, yeah, I'm like tearing up right now, dude. I know, I just you know, because I can see it in I my know, head. Because yeah, now that you have a child, like, dude, it probably, yeah, it hits you different. Well, I didn't even have a child the first time I watched it, and I freaking cried. Oh. I was like, no. <laughs> <laughs> and I, dude, I was like, freaking. This is like before I met Katie. Yeah, I think when I watched, like, this is like a pretty old commercial. And yeah, I do the commercials. Like, if it's like that sad, I will cry. Mm. I don't oh, know commercials why. Commercials will get me too. Yeah. Yeah. I, I get I, I feel like movies get me too. I I, I get mm -hmm. emotional. I love when the the person who has created the trailer, or the movie, or the the commercial, like sometimes they can hit it just right, man. It's it really is an art in itself. Like they can yeah. communicate, you know, in a minute, fifteen seconds, or even you know, thirty five seconds, they can communicate something very human. Yeah, you know, and that hits us. I, I love that. Yeah, it hits me every time. That like you were talking, I was like, oh, stop, Ryan, because <laughs> you have a daughter now. Hold back the tears. It's sad. <laughs> Yeah. So have, you, have you been making origami with your daughter? Uh, absolutely not. I do not have that skill and the time to. Hey, but you got YouTube now. We were just talking about YouTube teaching you lately. Oh, Maybe the YouTube, be your thing. YouTube has taught me a lot of things. The very, actually, this is not. I don't want to call it sad, but it's the very first thing I learned off YouTube when YouTube was not just starting because it's been around for a long time, right? Mm -hmm. But it was like one of those like still still rough. I yeah, think I was yeah. like 21, if that. I th 
No, I was like 21, 22 ish. Yeah, so it was still like figuring out what it wanted yeah, to be. Yeah, like there was no like whatever. crazy channels or whatever, yeah. or, you know, not what it is now. But the first thing I learned off YouTube was how to use that little tool to roll um, a freaking a joint. A joint, yeah. Oh, like the like um, like where you put it in between the two things and you you start rolling. Yeah. Yeah, that was the very first thing I learned off YouTube. That's fucking epic. Yeah, and that's in that's the, what YouTube was for. Yeah, and then the second thing was yeah, I don't like all this like content. It's like pretty normal now, but back then it's like I couldn't believe it was on there yeah. on how to use that because it was that one and my second one. I remember this because like that I, that's just how I learned how to do it was that and then ro- how to roll a blunt. And that was actually mm-hmm. the one how I learned how was the video of Tupac rolling oh, a blunt. No shit. He's like, this is how you roll a blunt in wow. 30 seconds. And that's how I learned. Well, bro, so think about like, so, so two things. So. Firstly, like YouTube is still figuring out what it wanted to be, mm-hmm. and and it's like, uh, like I I don't think we really even saw the benefits of it at that time. Like when YouTube first came along, we didn't mm-hmm. realize it would be like, a, think about how many hundreds of thousands of hours of tutorials we can upload, or different people can upload through across the world that can now teach other uh, other people from other sides of the world how to how to now do things. Like you were mm-hmm. talking about. Like you're working on, you know, l- watching detailing cars. Oh, now dude. you know how to do all these things, and that, and you can upload. So we didn't know that was a thing when YouTube first came around. Mm-hmm. But then we also, I, I think there was a shock factor, like for for you know our age, our generation, like when suddenly you could start seeing people. You're like, well, holy shit! Like, aren't they gonna get in trouble? Like they're posting a video of them with weed. Weed's illegal. Yeah. You know? Like so, it was this weird thing where like, wait, you can you can do that? You know? And that was right. You know, after coming off the edge of movies like Jackass and stuff where mm-hmm. you're like, wait, you can say that in a movie and you can make money off it. Like you can do those things yeah. and get paid for it, whatever. So is it, I feel like when YouTube first came around for, for our age and stuff, yeah. it was just, it was this different thing. Bro. It was different. Yeah. I remember, I still remember the interface that they had and it was, it definitely didn't look like that. Yeah. It was very cheap looking. Yeah. Well, now they have they have T. It's like its own network, you know, YouTube yeah. Premium TV or whatever. It's, yeah, because it's all, like all uh, now they have their own shows, don't they? Yeah. Yeah, like uh, YouTube Originals. Yeah. Which everyone has an original. Out. It's like it's not really original. You, <laughs> I'm I'm pretty sure because most of your ideas came from a book or something. Yeah. So is it really original or <laughs> did you? Yeah. yeah. We're just overusing the word original, probably. Yeah. Oh yeah, like because they have the. The Apple original or Apple TV, they, they call it, yeah, Apple TV shows or whatever, Apple TV Plus, I think, whatever. But yeah, Netflix original, blah blah blah. Right. Because even like, yeah, even the anime I watch now they have like, because I use Crunchyroll and Funimation, but Crunchyroll has Crunchyroll original. I'm like, mm. ah, can we be original on that name? Yeah, I mean, that's the thing about, you know, running everything in our world through capitalism is like this Mm -hmm. inevitable, like, all right, you have a thing, you better keep making it grow. You better keep making it. Oh, you got this cool, you know, video app where people get to upload videos. Well, now you need to make it its own network. Yeah. Like, (laughs) that's how it is. It's it's not a bad thing. That's how they make money now. It's like, yeah, yeah, it's like, oh, how do we make more? It's like, oh, we're we're viewing everyone else's uh, content. How do we make money off our own content? Mm-hmm. But it's like, are you saving money? Because like Netflix did, but then what? A couple of years ago, they're like saying, like, dude, we're losing money, <laughs> right? Right? Is, isn't that real? Right? Like, I'm not making that up. No, I'm pretty sure a couple well, years ago see, so they that, said they yeah. were like, we're actually losing money. I'm like, how? Every household, and even culture. But, I mean, it's like you, when everyone knows what Netflix and chill is, you would think that is the most <laughs> Like that company has billions and billions of dollars, right? I bet you even saying Netflix and chill was probably a marketing strategy. Like somebody at Netflix oh, made that I'm up sure. and made it into the meme culture. <sighs> and it populated. Yeah, there actually there was Netflix and chill. And then w- when Disney Plus came out, there was one for Disney. Oh, was it? I'm trying to Disney, remember it. Disney and... Disney oh, and, um, I can't remember, but people are going to look at I hope when they Disney listen. Disney and... Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> they don't even cover it up. <laughs> yeah, I totally forgot what it was, but it was, hel- I laughed so, like, it was one of those, like, Netflix and chill, I was like, whatever. But when they came out with the Disney one, and they had the saying, and I, 
beyond me right now, but it it's hilarious. So I'm sure somebody listening right now is like yelling what it is. They're like, I know what it yeah, is. Yeah, I know what it it's is. Disney and blah, blah. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. I, dude, it's crazy. We we didn't know when when all these apps came out. Like we had no idea what they would be. And I think even the developers, the people who made had these ideas and stuff, they had no idea what they'd be now. You know, even ten oh, years yeah. down the down the line. The, the book. We we had no idea how they would change us. And then look at just how often we're we're consuming content now. You know, it used to be you would just go oh, yeah. when you need something to do or, or you, you know, you need a tutorial. You're like, oh, I gotta fix my car. You look up tutorial for that specific mm-hmm. thing. But now it's like that's like where I get my information for the day, man. Like I like yeah. I'm, I'm I listen to so much YouTube. I'm I'm on there all the time. And it's interesting to think that it was just one day uh it started out as just a place for any old person to upload a video. Mm-hmm. And then everybody gets over the years, everybody gets better cell phones, which have better cameras. The cameras keep improving. Yeah. And now everybody gets to be kind of their own network in a way, you know? Yeah. Yeah. That's pretty, pretty true now. I mean, I think that's why if you really think about it, it's like, that's how a lot of companies or like those tutorials or shows or whatever is like, oh shoot. Like we didn't know when we gave these apps or tools to use that us common folk know mm-hmm. how to use it mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and they're like oh how are they getting more content out there than we are mm. that we're they're getting better than us like who would have thought that this genius right, right here could have done it 10 times better than we could ever could so now they're like oh okay well we'll sponsor you oh yeah yeah it's like hey no yeah. no we'll give you some money but you, you got to do what we tell you to do and how what to say, what to do, and how to do it. Yeah. Like, yeah, you have a great idea, but we can, uh, we, can we, we need money from you. Yeah. You know? Everybody wants their chunk. You know? Oh, everybody, everybody, wants to get everybody their piece. does. You know? I, most of these, like the, what, what was that Netflix documentary? Um, uh, the Social Dilemma. Oh, yeah. That was a oh, good one. That was a really I, talk, good. I talk about this all the time on the podcast. Oh, I'm that's like, a you, Listener, if you have not listened to The Social Dilemma on Netflix or, or listened to it, watched it, you got to go watch it right now. It's, Fuck uh, this podcast. Go watch The Social Dilemma. And then yeah, you know podcast. what? Don't listen to us. This was, this was going to be a bad one anyways. Yeah. We're just going to talk about the past. So. This is a trash <laughs> podcast. Turn it off and go watch The Social Dilemma. It's a good podcast, but this episode is going to suck. <laughs> <laughs> so just stop what you're doing. Watch Social Dilemma on Netflix and it will not change your life. It'll just definitely change it, the yeah. way you think think and what you feel about social media when, when you when you first uh did you and katie watch it together uh or? we tried to watch it together but we watch at a different pace mm-hmm. like uh when i watch something i can't be doing something at the same right. time you gotta be fully I, engaged fully engaged i guess i like ev- after taking my medication now i can actually kind of do that now nice but i haven't really tested the waters yet because usually when I'm watching something and if I'm doing something else, I will lose the last 10 minutes because I'm, for, I'm forgetting I was yeah, even you watching like rewind it. it. Yeah, and, and then I of, go back. But now, yeah. yeah, whatever. I've been paying attention a lot more because of that. But we watch at a different pace. So we we really don't... Oh, Katie's calling you. Oh, she is? Yeah. You want to pause this? Yeah. All that pent-up anger that I don't talk about, which then, I need to fix, by the then way. Then it explodes. Yep. I'm that guy. I... I'm like, yeah, everything's cool. That's why I want to, uh, I want to eventually get into like Brazilian jiu-jitsu or something like that. Like I want to get into something where I can like, because I'm a, I'm, I'm a very, I'm really like seldomly angry. Like I don't, I don't get angry that often, Mm -hmm. but, uh, like when I was younger, I'd have, like I'd get get in fights and I would like black out and like angrily fight people or something, you know? Mm -hmm. And so, and like. I feel like there is anger or like things inside of me that I could healthily in a way get out, you know, like, like, yeah. a, like whether it's like, you know, MMA or like Muay Thai or Bra- Brazilian Jiu Jitsu or mm-hmm. boxing or whatever, kind of just a place that is made to channel your aggression out. Yeah. You know, and, and like, Hey, here's a safe place where you can just let it all out, like get it out on the mat, you know? Yeah. I think that'd be, I need to find something like that for sure. Cause, uh, I've been, I usually, not like take my anger out, but I use it, all this pent up anger that I use. I, I heal myself by doing something I love. Right. And right now I, I don't have time. I don't have time for that. And which is like, it's not like 
oh, you can make the time. It's like, dude, I wake up, I go to work for about 10. Lately, for the last couple months, I've been working like 10 to 11 hours a day. Yeah. Been getting that, um, that overtime for sure. And then I come home, got to eat dinner. But at the same time, we're like, we're feeding the, feeding the kid, take care of the kid, entertain the kid. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And then after that, it's wife time, which usually lately I've been kind of feeling bad because it's like, I haven't been giving her the time, which I should be. But it's like, I don't even get myself time. So I'm just so tired. Right. I'm just like, I get stuck on my phone. I'm like, Ryan, put away your phone. Say something to you your wife right right you know but she's well, dude, on her phone and it's like and we're both tired you know you know that's that's something that like i think we just kind of have to deal with especially with covid because it you know covid the lockdowns and just all the changes in the last years or yeah. whatever like it has sent us all down different trajectories and it sent us all kind of more inside and more on our phones more on our laptops more on our computers more talking on zooms you know we're our our hug with technology is bigger now Oh, you know, like it, it just is. Yeah. And and it's something that like, like you almost got to like be gentle with yourself in a way and, and, and recognize like, oh, like it's not just me. Like I'm not like a bad person for being on my phone more. It's mm. like everybody's kind of going through this. We're all on our phone more. And we just got like, now that we notice it, we got to try to to follow those intuitions of, oh shoot. Okay. I'm on my phone a little bit too much. Let's, let's put my phone down right now. And then I'm also going to walk yeah. over to my wife and say, Hey, put that thing down, you know, come here, give yeah. me a hug or, or whatever, yeah, you know, talk it's, or it's something watch we, something together. You yeah. know, we, we, we don't got to make, I, we got to be careful to not make ourselves feel guilty about it. I feel yeah. like, because, I mean, some extent, you know, if you're spending too much time, you're not getting your actual work done. You're just sucked into your phone. It gets so easy. It's literally like a fucking colorful slot machine in our hands. Man. Yeah. It's amazing. Like, yeah, it's crazy, but we, we got to like insert, you know, uh, the ability to step out of it and, and notice, okay, this is good. This I could enjoy the rest of my night just watching a couple of YouTube videos and whatever, mm-hmm. but I got to put some time into here. I got to put some time into the present moment. I got to get some things done. I got to hang out my wife. I got to, whatever it is, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. I, I think we all got to do that. Yeah, you know? for sure. Cause yeah, I've been, I've been stuck on the, on the YouTube thing, man. Been cause I've been like, I, we were talking before I was, I'm trying to just, maintain my truck because so many miles and bought it used you just got to do it you know it's yep. still running awesome but got to do this maintenance but so i've been doing that it's not like i've been wasting my time or anything you know it's been oh how do i do this myself or what do i need to do i'm, I'm researching if anything and it's it's been like Besides the car detailing thing, I need to stop that for sure. <laughs> that car detailing thing is freaking addictive to watch. I cannot stop watching that. Yeah, the before and afters. The I'm just before so and satisfied. dude, I love those I things. I live for that. Yeah, it's the the before and after. Whoever invented that word, <laughs> good job. <laughs> before and after, like really think about that. Yeah, Th- that that reveal. Do you ever watch the? Um... Like when they remodel houses and shit, like they'll buy an old kind of beat up house and they'll mm-hmm. remodel it. Yeah. Oh man, when they show that before and after, like towards the end, yeah. and they show like the, you know, I swear they add sparkles to it sometimes in, in After Effects, and mm-hmm. it's like before you're like, oh, it's not so bad, and then you see the after, and it looks like a whole new house, but it's yeah. from the same camera angle. Dude, I live that life, man. Yeah. Dude. Oh yeah. So I you, do that. I we do that every day. So well, satisfying. at least like just electrically you know yeah. doing the you know being electrician and whatever so i see that you know doing remodels and stuff like not so much the whole house you know some sometimes we get like a whole house but a lot of people are always it's money 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 mm-hmm. kind of thing so it's oh we'll just you know put lipstick over it and that kind of thing that's just because they're trying to sell the house whatever right. i get that yeah. part but if you're about to live in something and if you want to remodel a house, if you want to go full bore, it's like, dude, get it down to the bones, man. Mm-hmm. Get it down mm-hmm. to the bones because you have no idea what you have. It's like because this Russian kid, he ended up not working out for us. He actually, he's the the kid that gave us all COVID at oh, work. No. Yeah. Gave you all COVID and said peace All of us, us besides Jack. 
besides like my father-in-law. He was the only one who didn't get it. I'm like the oldest guy. I was going to say, is he the oldest uh, out of He's everyone? the oldest one. He never got it. <laughs> yeah. I only had it for like 10 days, but yeah. you well, know. You had to quarantine though, right? I had to quarantine I, the I same talked to you. I talked to you like right around that time. Yeah, I it you're just like, so happened you text me and I was like, dude, I can't do any. I got COVID. Yeah. I was like, you, were, you were trying to like, yeah. like Katie and the baby were, uh, you guys were all living in the same house, but you were trying to like stay in the same room, right? Or like into one room by yourself, yeah, right? Yeah. So Isolating? I, yeah. I, I, I had to isolate into to the spare room that we had that we never used mm. like it was like my old bed that I had like you know old queen bed that's just been sitting there it's like sitting there collecting dust not literally we did clean it all the time like <laughs> when we washed our yeah. covers we washed that, those covers I'm like yeah. why are we doing that no one ever sleeps in there which I'm so glad that Katie <laughs> has that mentality of being a clean freak because yep. I had to stay in there. That's the wife hookup, man. Yeah, yeah, out. that's wifey material right there. Heck yeah. Telling me that I was wrong to not clean it and wash it. She's like, no, we have to keep it clean. You never know when a guest is coming over or when we use it. And guess what? I had to use that Perfect. for freaking 10 days. It sucked. But the thing is, I have no idea how my daughter and Katie never got it. Yeah. I woke up sick as hell. Like, it was, I was fine the day before. Like I had totally no, no, no symptoms, symptoms nothing. Huh. And I woke up and I was like, I had the flu for a few days. I was like, this is different. I knew, I knew it was right. different. And I was like, what the heck? Well, and around this time, we're all also like, anytime you feel at all different. Isn't that you're like, is, stupid? Is it COVID? Is it COVID? Is it COVID? It, I'm feeling sick. COVID? Like yeah. you, you cough a little bit and you're like, I, hey guys, I don't have COVID. Just uh, let you know. I, I don't yeah. think I'm good. Yeah, exactly. Right. It's, it's just a weird feeling. It's a weird time that we're living in right now. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I woke up and, you know, I I really don't get sick. When I do, I get like, mm. I'm sick. Yeah. And so it was weird to me. I woke up, I was like, I, I do not feel good. Mm. Like my body was aching and I had all the symptoms of like, man, this feels like I have the flu. But usually I, it's like, you know, I've been living for so long. I know how my body reacts to stuff. And I know the buildup to things like, oh, my throat's getting kind of scratchy or my nose getting kind of stuffy. You mm. know, I had all of that overnight. Mm. And this is like like the week before we went to a party, like a birthday party. But I guess it takes about like four days or something like that to mm. really have the, to was be it, contagious and everything else. Was right? it from the birthday party or from the- No, it, no, was, it, it was from that Russian kid. That we hired, he was like pretty young. He was like either twenty or twenty one. Mm. He was from North Carolina or something like that. Mm. So, whatever. And uh, he went to work after visiting his family that came from North Carolina. That's who he got it from. We found out. And he w came to work. And He's he like, he and he like told us halfway through the day that we were all working together. He's like, yeah, I haven't been feeling good. Like yesterday and today, we're like, are you? Well, and this was like, a, this was yeah. when times were pretty high. Like, I feel like we, everybody's kind of relaxed more on it now, you know, just as time has gone yeah, on and in this a weird is, way. Yeah, yeah. But this was when it was probably, if, I think this was when it was very, because I think you were one of the first people that actually I knew that had had it. Yeah, dude, that I, I'm you know how many sure. people told me that? I'm like, yeah. well, because I had to tell everyone at that birthday party. Oh, you know? yeah. Yeah, I was you like, know, dude, uh, sure, yeah, because yeah. it was two days before, but I guess it like, incubates or whatever and it takes about four days to be contagious mm. and it was at the time that's what they were telling me so you know obviously the news and whatever collect like collective information about corona mm. has always changed right yeah. well at that time that's what my doctor told me he's like yeah so whoever you are with in the last two days because you probably got it uh two days before that but you were con you weren't contagious. So at the time that I went to the birthday party, I wasn't I wasn't okay, contagious. Right, right. But I still had to tell them. Of course. So I told one person because a lot I at that birthday party I only knew like really talked to like a couple people. So I I text my cousin. And I text one of my really good friends, uh, Brandon uh, Barty. Oh yeah. So I text him like, hey, uh, I have COVID, and yeah. so you should text everyone. Cause I don't have any of their numbers. So they all had to go get tested, blah, yeah. blah, blah. And it was like me remembering who I, which I, I'm glad that I don't really hang out with a lot of people yeah. kind of thing. I've just, it's not like, okay, I yeah. really, I, I'm just 
kind of guy that doesn't like people. So you I don't stand really stand up and make a speech for the whole, yeah, the whole so, house. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, so I woke up sick and, uh, my daughter was right there, right in the middle mm. and Katie right on the other side. Wow. Woke up with it, contagious, everything else. So I quarantined myself that, that day and I called in, I'm like, Hey, you know, my father-in-law is my boss. So I was like, Hey Jack, uh, can't come in today. I feel really sick. I'm not feeling good. Yeah. And then this is, that's when we all found out, blah, 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 that like, dude, he, uh, that Russian kid, I, I think his name, I can't remember. He only worked with us for like a minute. Yeah. Maybe uh, two months. Yeah. That's Vasily. That was his name. That is his name. Sorry. And, uh, is dragging him through the coals now. Uh, yeah, dude. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that guy, I didn't really like that guy, but whatever. Um, <laughs> He he's one of those one uppers, you know. Uh, like, oh, you should do it this way, blah 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 blah. I was like, dude, shut up! You're yeah. barely an electrician. Yeah, okay? it's time to learn, bud. Yeah, it's time to for you to learn from us, not yeah. like what you used to do back in North Carolina. But yeah. anyway, so so that was coming all into play. So I went out and I called Kaiser, and I was like, hey, uh, I need to get tested just to make sure. And, and I was like, maybe I'm just sick, you know? Maybe I'm just like whatever. It's I'll just go get it tested because it wasn't that bad yet. Mm -hmm. You know, I was just like, oh, you know, I don't really feel good. Got tested. I got an answer because I think it was like around one o'clock that day. The next morning at 732. I remember this because mm -hmm. I was waiting on the answer and I was up at like 630. Mm -hmm. And I was quarantined. I was in that spare room already and I was quarantining myself and we're like, oh, no, this would be bad because, you know, our daughter's not even that old yet. I think she was... I can't remember when it happened, yeah, but it, I think she was only like five months old or six months old at the time. And my test came back and they're like, and I'm looking and I'm like, oh, this is some weird like thing to say, the test results, blah, blah, blah. I'm like looking at it, I'm like, what the heck? And right at the bottom, it said positive. I was like, mm. shoot, yeah, shoot, shoot, shoot. And then, so we had to wait another four or five days and they went in on a Friday, Friday. No, so okay, so I got it got the test result Tuesday. They went in on Friday, got tested, and uh they came up negative. Mm. I was like, "Are you kidding me?" Yeah. Man, my immune system sucks then. Yeah. Or at least well, that's what I it's thought. It's hard to know. Yeah, it's yeah. hard. To, I feel like all the answers around the COVID stuff are so inconsistent. It's so confusing. Well, because it's, it's new. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's new. Yeah, it's it's new. And then it's also, it's ran, everything right now in America is ran through political lenses for no reason, for no fucking reason. Yeah. Like we, we solve complex problems, but we've got to make sure we run it through the red and blue real quick. Yeah. And so it gets confusing. But um, yeah, it's, it's like, it's hard to know because like, it's hard to, because I feel like incredibly healthy people still get it. And sometimes incredibly healthy people or people who take all their vitamins and stuff, they'll get it and they'll be very sick. Yeah. And then people who, you know, drink beer and eat cheeseburgers every day, seven days a week, they'll get it and they'll be like, dude, I, I kind of had the sniffles for a day and I was good. Yeah. It's so, it's so, it's so crazy. So, yeah. so what do you think? Did you, uh, did you have any of the smell and taste loss? Yes. Stuff? I feel like that's the weirdest one, right? Yeah. That's weird. It, it, I, I didn't get it. I, I still haven't had it oh, to okay. my knowledge. So, so yeah, that, but, that whole thing sucked. Yeah. I wouldn't want to. It was, it was super weird. Uh, that time, um, whenever that, it, cause it didn't happen right at first. Right. Uh, it happened after the fourth day. Because the, uh, the other days, like, it was weird because I got super sick within those three days. Like, I went from kind of sick to really sick. And mm -hmm. it wasn't my whole back. It was everything I felt to describe it, how I, I felt it, was everything around my spine. It felt mm -hmm. like someone was grabbing it and poking knives into the sides of my spine. Strange. If I can... Describe it like that. Wow, yeah. That's what it felt like. I did not want to move. I was super achy. But then it was like one sy symptom a day I was getting. And it was... Cause the first thing I got was the back thing. Mm. I was hurting. Then I, w I was... I think the third day I was super lightheaded and I didn't want to eat anything. Which I did, but I still could taste, right? But I think it was the fourth or fifth day. Taste 
was immediately gone. Interesting. Like I woke up and I went to go eat breakfast, you know, or not go eat breakfast. My, I, I felt like I was in jail <laughs> and she would drop off the food at the, at the front of the door <laughs> <laughs> and I would have to gra- open the door and grab yeah. it and just go back to bed and eat there, you know? Yeah. And uh, I went to go eat whatever she made and she makes these German pancakes, right? Mm. And I don't think it was that day, but I, I, it was one of the days that she did make... No, 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 okay, we'll go back because that wasn't that was later. But she made some sort of breakfast, and I took one bite, and I was like, I tasted nothing. Oh, right away, you knew. Right yeah, away, I was weird. like, wait, what? This is not what I because yeah. in your mind, because yeah. you can smell right, because I could still smell at the time, because the smelling didn't happen till the next day. It, it seriously is like when I have it, it's like new symptom, new symptom, new symptom. It was the weirdest feeling, dude. Dude, it's such a weird thing. Like, I feel like everyone's op- onset into COVID is different. Everyone's, yeah. like, symptoms are different. Mm-hmm. Everyone, like, they, they happen in different times. Yeah. I, I wonder if it really does have to do with our individual immune systems or if it's, like, something more complex than that. Yeah. I, I wonder. I mean, I'm sure we'll, well, I'm sure we'll know, you know, in, in five years when we're looking back and we have, like, actually the right info yeah and we can actually facilitate getting that right info to, yeah. to the people's it's ears, like but... oh this is what actually happened and we figured yeah. it out and this is why it it got your smell and taste blah 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 and right yeah because i it was funny because i had it not the shortest time out of everyone at work because we we were not work after that happened every like the whole place was shut down like not like place i would have to say because he you know he doesn't have like an office or whatever my father-in-law Jack, uh, but he, all of us couldn't work. I didn't go back to work for till the two weeks Mm because after whatever, because as soon as you have it, you have like two weeks, but as soon as you start feeling good and as soon as like, there's like a certain mark and a certain, like once you have 90% of your symptoms gone, Mm -hmm. I went back to work. They're like, yeah. So as soon as you're not contagious after that, everything else, right? So I I only had it for like 10 days, I guess, or I was only sick, sick 10 days, but I took the extra, not the extra, but the two, two full weeks off and I went back to work and I was fine. I, I never really got the heavy, like hard breathing part. Yeah. Never got that. I, I, mean, I got tired when I was walking up the stairs, but I was breathing fine, but my body was tired. Yeah. You know, like, like even w- after. Yeah. This is like after like I could actually be with my daughter and walk throughout the house because mm-hmm. I was like strictly from spare room to bathroom, spare mm-hmm. room to bathroom, you know, and it kind of sucked because my wife had to wash or like, you know, have. Yeah, a, take care of Well, because works. our shower, like we only, our, our main bath on on the upstairs has a tub, mm. but that's the only place I could go. So she had in our shower in the master bedroom at the time you know, when we were living there before we sold it, mm-hmm. was the standing shower. Yeah. And so she's like, it was the worst trying to give her a bath. <laughs> Poor thing, yeah. Yeah, because like even our kitchen kitchen sink downstairs was not that big. So, and she, at the time, she was too big to sit in there. And so, yeah, it, it was just, I felt bad because Katie had to work harder because she had to take care of the kid herself, which... Mm-hmm. I don't want to say that because there's a lot of single moms, you know, but it, oh, she didn't realize how hard it was until I was out of the picture. Of course. Yeah. yeah. I can change her. I can be with her. I can take care of her so Katie can do something. It was full time mommy duty. Right. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I'm sure that was difficult as heck for, I mean, difficult for you too, because mm-hmm. you like, you're aware of it. It's not mm-hmm. like you're like, Oh cool. I get a vacation. I ain't going to do anything. And like, now you got to take care of it. You're like, I'm sorry. I wish I could help, but yeah. I've got to. I've got to do what's right right now mm-hmm. for the next ten, fourteen days, or whatever. Yeah. So it's, it's it's super strange. I so I, to my knowledge, I haven't had it unless I've had it and been asymptomatic. Um, yeah. I I feel that I've been around enough. Just just like w- where I'm at, and like you know, working in a package sorting facility, you know, I feel like I I definitely would have would have caught it by now. It seems yeah. like that. But uh, I, so I was in. I'm pretty good about, um, like a lot, I do a lot of breath work. I do a lot of breathing. I'm, I'm working out a lot. I'm doing good running. So I can feel my lungs and stuff are all pretty strong. Um, mm-hmm. I take a lot of vitamins. I take a lot of, um, you know, I, I feel like my immune system is pretty strong. I, Shaylee, my ex had gotten it at work 
she had got it um, being a nurse. And then she went on a vacation right afterwards before she knew that she had it. She uh, went on a vacation and then um, they had sent her an email basically saying like, sorry, we didn't realize, but you have been exposed for the last three days. Because, oh, so someone crap. basically had a false positive or something like yeah. that. Um, and so I, and I actually had taken her, I had taken her to the airport when she had it. She didn't know she had it, but it was like, um, so she wasn't having any symptoms, but I feel like, I, so, so I'm not sure if it was even transmittable at the time, mm -hmm. but I was in a car with her, you know, we left early in the morning. So the windows are up. Like it was, you know, an hour, yeah. hour there and it's talking. It's like that, like at the time that's your, your person. So you're like, you, dude, you're fine. You yeah. Know? Yeah. It's like, you know, being anywhere, it's like, yeah, I'm not going to wear a mask around you. You're like, I'm with you every day. Right. Yeah. yeah. No, well, we, we had broken up by then anyway. I was oh, just being okay. nice, giving her right at the airport. But, oh, okay. But she, we, it, it was interesting that regardless, even that, and then we, I'm pretty sure I stayed up there the night before or something. Uh huh. Regardless, it was, I, I should have gotten it because she went on to the vacation and like the people who are with her who didn't take vitamins and stuff, they, they got it. When, oh, when they she, all, yeah. Oh my like, God. This it, is how spread. it happens. <laughs> yeah. But she didn't yeah. know. It was like a, a screwed up thing at work, you know? And it's funny too, because I, I try to be weary of blame myself when it comes to COVID because it's this virus that is like not, it's not any of our faults, but like if you're the person who spreads it or you're the person who is like bringing it to other people, it's mm -hmm. automatically like, dude, fuck you, you know? Mm -hmm. And and like she, you know, she was a nurse, so it's obviously she wasn't. She's just in the in the line of fire. Yeah. So it just just could have happened, but um, yeah. So so I haven't gotten it. Um, I I don't know. I I'm I'm pretty. I'm kind of like overly cocky about it. You know, I, I wear my mask. I, I I do all the things. Yeah. You know, I, I wash my hands plenty, and I I try to to play it safe and stuff. But I I just I take all my vitamins and I do all my breath work and stuff mm -hmm. and. I hope for the best. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know if I'll get it. I. It's interesting because it keeps changing too. You know the information that they release, or they're like mm -hmm. now that now they they are saying that it was from a lab in in Wuhan or whatever. Yeah. And it's impossible. It's. I feel like at this point when I hear information about it, I'm like, I don't know. I don't even know if I care to research it. I don't know yeah. if I. It's just exhausting trying to keep up with, trying to follow all of the COVID stuff. Yeah. It's almost just like I want to put my head down. I want to. You know, I'll put my mask on. I'm going to go to the grocery store. I'm going to go to work. I'm going to do my thing. You know, you, you just kind of got to. Yeah. Got to follow it. Because I don't know when we're going to. It's 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 hard to to think of what the other side of this whole COVID lockdown looks like. You know, like, do you think everybody's going to get it eventually? And then once everybody has it and we have. Oh, like know, the flu, like the yeah. regular flu that we get every year. Yeah. I don't know. I. I. Personally, people are going to get mad at me for saying this. And you know what? I, it doesn't matter because I, I'm never going to talk to you unless you come to my house. <laughs> yeah, or, yeah, whatever. But it's, yeah, I, I, this is to all the families that have lost somebody. I feel for you. I'm of sorry, course, you know, course. but it's, you, you got to take in everything else that's happening right now too. What people are dying of. Mm -hmm. And like, oh man, this is this takes me back to the conspiracy theory, or and even those, and then actual real facts that I've seen, you know, whatever, and the percentages of people dying. Mm -hmm. I'm like, uh, it's like any other thing. Like, yeah. why are we making such a big deal out of this? Yeah, because it's very new. Yeah, I get that, and I got it, and yeah. I'm I got it, and I'm still this yeah. way. So right, it's like, right. come on, guys, like. Yeah, we are making a big deal out of it, and yeah. I feel for those people that have lost people. I really do, but I feel bad for the people yeah. who have lost in different situations. That's it, losing a person is losing a person, of course. right? Yeah. But to me, I think this whole thing has been been blown out of proportion, mm -hmm. kind of thing. That's just my personal opinion, and uh, I think it's been making people crazy. It I've seen 100%. arguments happen over covid I, it almost happened at where i'm living right now you know yeah. it's about where who we can hang out with i've never been told you know like who i can and cannot hang out with you know it's like why does that matter yeah you know i i, I got a huge fight with one of my family members because i was 
I call it, I was COVID scared because mm. for my daughter, because two of my cousins was come from uh, Colorado and they were coming for Thanksgiving. And I'm like, and it got, it got way blown. I, I haven't been that angry probably since like, I don't know. I'm going to be comical about this probably since 99. Yeah. All right. I, well, now you got this father's wrath in you, man. Yeah. This is the new side well, of no, that because I was getting too. blamed for something. Oh, interesting. Yeah, I was like, hey, you know, like if those two kids are going to be there, you know, I, I call them kids, but they're like 21, 22, somewhere around there, like maybe 23. I don't know. It's I haven't seen them in a while, but they were going to be there. I'm like, I don't want my daughter around that. And they're like, I told my parents that I'm like, it's just not going to happen, but you know, we're probably not going to have Thanksgiving up there and that's okay. If you mm-hmm. like, I never said, don't bring them over, blah, blah, blah. And it, that got blown out of proportion. Then my other cousin that mm-hmm. texts me saying, you're, you're such a hypocrite, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, what oh, are yeah. you even talking about? Man. And saying that yeah. I don't love you. are like, this is just an excuse just cause you don't like them. I'm like, I don't what? think I've ever said I didn't like my, our other family members. It, it sucks that you even yeah. have to be in this argument, though. You know, Dude, honestly, like yes. it's, it's something that wasn't really it, like it's imposed on you. Like, yeah. like not that the virus has to be like someone else's fault, like another person. It's yeah. like to blame or whatever, but. It's like, we don't really know how to navigate these waters. Like, we don't mm-hmm. know. Like, if dude, if you're feeling genuine, genuinely kind of scared, like, I, I don't want to risk my daughter's health, and I am actually concerned about that, you should be able to talk about that and yeah. say that, you know? But but it's this new thing where, you know, we're all kind mm-hmm. of defensive about it in yeah. a way, right? Where we're like, oh, you're, you know, you're taking it out on me, or you're mm-hmm. you're thinking, you know, calling you, calling you hypocrite, hypocrite or whatever. Yeah. It's really hard to remember that, this whole thing is not only new, but it's like we all we're all dealing with so much information. Mm-hmm. None of us truly know what's actually true. Yeah. So if someone's like Ryan, you're overreacting, or like you shouldn't care about that, mm-hmm. like they don't know what you've checked out. They don't know what you've experienced. Like they don't know like what you know news networks and videos or social media like videos yeah. or whatever that you've watched that have told you certain um, aspects of certain information. Yeah. I was watching this. Uh, I was watching uh, Tony Robbins actually, who is someone. I feel like, you know, this happens with like influencers or, you know, famous people or whatever. Like Tony Robbins is someone at this point, I've consumed so much of his content. Um, mm-hmm. And if listeners, if you don't know who Tony Robbins is, he's like a motivational speaker. He helps people a lot. He's incredible. But uh, like I was listening to a video and I've heard so many videos from him that I trust what he has to say. Mm-hmm. Like I, I, he just seems like a trustworthy person. Yeah. I feel like, um, you know, of course, not every single sentence out of his mouth. I'm gonna hang on to everything and yeah. say it's absolutely. It's just truth. like your intuition on like his like characteristics yeah. and his like. Yeah, I'm like yeah. he's a good guy. I trust what he's saying, mm-hmm. and and I just watched this video not too long ago um, that was saying, and it was him. He was basically talking about the numbers of like the death rates. He was kind of pointing out, and like this is you know dipping into conspiracy theory stuff, and and a lot of this information does. But he was basically saying the amount of deaths per year, like based off like 2017, 2018, 2019, 2020, Mm -hmm. they haven't technically gone up. They've been pretty plateaued. Like they've been going as expected, Mm -hmm. but the reasons for death, like flu has gone down, like cold has gone down, like all these regular things that we experience that we normally count as deaths, Mm -hmm. those have gone down, but COVID deaths, now that they're marked as COVID deaths have have gone up. Replacing the that yeah. the new numbers. And, and so not more people have died, but we're doing all of this, like locking down the whole country, mm-hmm. shutting down businesses. Like I, I think I, I think I've heard 70% of restaurants in LA have now officially closed their doors or something like that. Yeah. Like, isn't that insane? New York yeah, is I heard fucked. About that. Dude, New York is like, their, their crime is up like 50%. Like, dude, it's just like, w- we're, we're as a, as a country or like, I don't know if it's just because the news media or social networks or because we're listening to the wrong people who don't know what the fuck they're talking about mm-hmm. anymore. We're reacting in disproportionately. Mm-hmm. Like it just doesn't make sense. Like if this is okay, here's a fact or here's a percentage or here's a value, like this many people with COVID mm-hmm. uh, have this, or this many people have died from COVID. How do you get from that number that we should do this. Like this many people have died from COVID, we need to shut down fucking everything and nobody can have a single person inside their business. Yeah. Uh, you know, for the next six months or whatever. Yeah. We're just reacting very disproportionately. And I think the general public is 
intelligent enough to yeah. to recognize you guys what the hell is going on like this isn't the way we should be doing it we're yeah. watching our love like people we love we're watching family-owned businesses shut down we're watching you know like like people very stressed out we're watching our you know people in our community we're watching suffer and we're suffering yeah. ourselves and our family are suffering all this stuff so i don't know it's it's one of those things that's hard to talk about right because it's like you instantly are like man i I think I'm a conspiracy theorist. You know, I, I'm not trying to go go against and say everyone else is wrong, yeah. but there's also this place where we don't even feel like we have a stage to talk about what we really feel. Because mm -hmm. I feel like as citizens, you know, just on like, you know, we're just a couple of regular dudes and mm -hmm. and we should be able to disagree with what's going on without feeling like confused about it yeah. or scared about or it. Or getting hated on. Because yeah. it's like now that you have that like cancel culture. It's cancel like, culture. Fuck yeah, cancel culture. Yeah, and then now it's like if like someone right now is listening to this podcast mm -hmm. this episode right now and heard my opinion on it like fuck that guy yep. i can't believe he believes that cancel this they're I'm gonna, gonna find stop. out where he works i'm gonna call his boss yeah. i'm gonna make sure he gets in trouble yeah like i'm canceling him like everyone should hate ryan santos for saying yeah. that covid is not as big of big of a deal than it should be and you know, it's like you know it's like dude that's just my personal opinion mm -hmm. can i have one you've got to be able to have yeah, one yeah it's just like dude because i'm not just when i listen to this COVID stuff i'm not just listening to like my side of yeah. how like the numbers thing and like whatever it's i'm listening to both sides yeah. because and it's like a lot of people don't out. do that you're, but, you're trying yeah. to decipher like what's true yeah here. what yeah what's... what is really true because yeah. like a lot of people that have that like really strong Mm -hmm. COVID's bad, blah, blah, blah. And we need to do this as a, as a, you know, as a group, we need to get together and we need to stop this COVID and we need to follow all the rules. I'm like, dude, the, uh, like, and the, and those same people are, I don't know if they're still going out to restaurants or not mm. and trying to do the saf safety precautions because I never heard, I did a lot of research, but I never heard anything when you're sitting at a restaurant that this the disinfecting part because they say what like once uh covid covid or like the the virus virus is on like because you can take your mask off right because you can't eat with a mask on that's <laughs> totally impossible if you can without breathing in anything that they've touched and gave to you workers there all day yeah and people where you're sitting is where another person just sat there mm -hmm. five minutes before with their masks off yeah like, come on. <laughs> can, can we explain that? Because yeah. like, oh, no, it's like, you know, we have these tents up. I'm like, okay, so you're closing in that tent. Mm -hmm. So you're basically almost in another structure. Well, yeah, you, you, you made outside an inside yeah, so that you can now eat. Eat, yeah. Like, but, but so this is the thing, bro. Yeah. Like, we all know that it's ridiculous. Like if you go, like if you go to a place where they seat you outside and you're like eating, or you're, you mm -hmm. go to a tap house, you know, or whatever, they're like, we only have twenty five percent seating, but here you go, here's this, and you and you literally talk to the manager and you say like, hey, do you truthfully believe that like this is going to stop COVID if it's mm -hmm. what we believe in? They're like, no, yeah. I'm just trying to fucking make money so I don't so I can feed my kids. Yeah, I'm trying to make sure my business doesn't close down. We all think it's ridiculous. Yeah, it, no, it, it really is. Like. It, it, it sucks it sucks because we are we are kind of helpless in it you know in, in a sense mm -hmm. but i think what's going on you know in in a a strange rebellious positive light i think yes. that we could say you know this time is it you know this is an overused terminology but um it's really woken up a lot of us to two things about it's woken us up to how how we do things mm -hmm. like instead of just like the rat race of like we just keep going and we just follow these guidelines and whatever like i don't think this dumb stuff this like really like this dorky way of doing things mm -hmm. I, I think we're all too smart for this now man like yeah. i think that like we're you know we're not all just sheep or whatever people want to say yeah I, I think that we're intelligent enough to be like you know what we should be able to run our businesses how we want to we should be able to open up our um, you know, open up our restaurants and like, hey, if we want to take the risk, we're we're gonna take the risk. Mm -hmm. I think that I, I think that instead of just like following it and then like, 
you know, not straying from the narrative that's that's being told in the mainstream because mm-hmm. we're afraid of the repercussions. We're afraid of getting canceled. We're afraid of getting um, in trouble. We're afraid of getting fined, all yeah. of these things. I think that we're, we have enough smart people now who are kind of on this side of like, dude, you know what? This this thing is fucking weird how we're reacting to this. This mm-hmm. I don't think we're doing the, the best route. I don't think that it's right based yeah. off of the amount of people that are actually sick and the amount of like restaurants and people who have lost their businesses and are, you know, maybe losing their home or, mm-hmm. you know, renters who are, you know, like not getting paid any rent every month, all this stuff. Yeah, because, like, yeah, the, like how do you keep your, like, all the people that like own... You know, uh, uh, why am I forgetting the name? Uh, an apart the apartment complex. Yeah. You know. Oh yeah. my god, I can't believe it. it's been so long since I've been in an apartment. <laughs> I you know, said apartment. For I a haven't while. It's been. It's been a while. Yeah. But um, the living in apartment complex or own apartment complexes, it's like uh, the people can't make money, but they're still living there. But how does the the people that own it making money? They right. are losing money every single because they still got to pay. Yeah. They got to pay for that land. They yeah. got to pay for the buildings. It's not like you know, like got got to pay all those taxes. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like everyone, everyone right now is losing money. I'm just glad I'm in in construction. I'm in a field, mm-hmm. which is weird to me still. How we're st- st- we've been the busiest. I, the three years, I only the three years I've been in construction working. This is the busiest time I've ever been in, mm. which is like weird to me. It's just because a lot of people are staying at home, right? A lot of people, right. a lot of the people that have money, they all, they, a lot of people work from home now mm. because of COVID. You know, they either they were forced to or some people just work from home. They're just doing a lot of re- reconstruction. Oh, mm-hmm. but to go back on that uh, little sign out before we start talking about that, but what I was saying is like uh, about that restaurant part was, um, it's like, do they have like that magic wipe chemical to get, does it just kill it? Because if that is happening, this is a stupid reason. I I get it. But like, if it's killing that, how we, how is it that we're still all getting it? Mm. How is it still like, so we can go to restaurants, breathe all over the crap using someone else's utensils, by the way. Right. Yes, they disinfected whatever. It's like it's so it's easily killed because like they said from what I heard from, uh, I don't know, a few months back. Once the virus is on something, it lasts for a few hours. Yeah, I I heard something similar. Yeah, so it's like, but you can just wipe it clean, and it just kills the virus. I guess I haven't done enough research on that, but still, like, what if that cleaner wasn't good? Right, obviously like they're gonna didn't, didn't kill the hundred percent of it yeah you know? and like and people are still going to restaurants all over the place i mean yeah. I, that's why you got california closed 70 percent of their restaurants new york is just totally shut down mm-hmm. a lot of businesses are going out and it's sad to hear but it the whole thing i'm just yeah. so frustrated because i don't know what to think anymore right the, 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 Be- that, that's the thing. like how am i supposed to think about this yeah. like i we like, definitely don't have the answer yeah because it's like this has come from opinion from a person that got covid lived through it and what i'm saying is i, I i'm not saying the symptoms were worse i'm just saying i had symptoms i've never had before mm. you know like i've when i got the flu when i when i said i get when i get sick which i really get sick I get really sick. I yeah. I get the whole Hits, yeah, yeah. achy body and like it just felt like I had the flu. It wasn't any worse than when I got the flu when I was twelve years old. Mm, yeah. But that's just me. Yeah, and like I said, I'm gonna say this again. I feel for those who've lost people. I've heard I've of heard course. about it. You I see, mean, hear it over the news. Really. That's, that's, yeah, that's, it's like course. I do feel bad, and that sucks. But you know, it's like like I said, we're it, we're blowing this out of proportion, and we're just. People are just so believing in what the media is saying, Mm -hmm. you know, Mm -hmm. and that like the media to me is uh, mainstream media. What I'm saying is Mm -hmm. uh, something I I really don't want to watch because it's it's I don't think many of us watch it anymore. Like this, like a lot of our younger generations, we're pretty much at the point where we're like, 
we can't watch it because it's so insane and it's so mm-hmm. ridiculous and it's so like it's designed to attack your fucking brainstem mm-hmm. so instantly you feel like you're in so, a fear response oh yeah it's like people live in fear and that's what we're, we're right now we're in the fight or flight mode right now mm-hmm. that's what everyone is mm-hmm. and i which makes us more at risk to get this thing yeah it puts our immune system at risk it puts our entire system like, yeah if anything this is what we should do it's like the my thing. My dad used to make this joke, making like it's so bad. It's not like it's not like a really a joke. It's a, a thing that he just came up with. Like when I was younger, he's like, "God, people are such idiots," you know. It's like I know. It's like people just don't have that that the way their mind works, which I'm pretty sure is like talking about what I was doing at the time. It's like you just need to be better than these people. It's like we just need to rip off all the the warning labels off everything and just freaking let everyone just, you know, natural selection happen. I was oh, like, no. oh my gosh. <laughs> but Ooh. now that I'm older, I'm like, <laughs> okay, well, if people are so scared, it, they should just go by that. It's like, okay, we're just going to stay inside and we're just going to let everyone do their thing and see who's... Rip off the warning labels, yeah. Ri- rip off the COVID warning labels and s- let natural selection happen. I mean... And you know what? Yeah. yeah, like people who survive, you know, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger, right? <laughs> That's I mean, what it's I funny, heard. you know, that, yeah. that is as as a philosopher Kelly Clarkson once said. You know. <laughs> but, uh, but, you know, that's how our immune systems work, bro. Yeah. That's literally how humans work is, yeah. is we... You know, if you have you seen Bubble Boy, remember that that movie? Oh way back in the day? my gosh! It's no like, one ever talks about that movie. It's dangerous for him to go out into the world because his mom protected him in this little bubble f- since such a young age with mm-hmm. this like fake, fake, he's like fake sick almost. Basically, he just doesn't have an experienced immune system. Mm-hmm. His his you know in, in internal biological systems have not been exposed to things that teach them. And the incredible thing about humans is we get taught from viruses. Like, like you catch a virus, you catch a cold, or you catch a whatever mm-hmm. when you're young, and then you have the antibodies. You, you have the, you, your immune system is now built up to protect it now. Yeah. So that's like the incredible cool thing about humans. Yeah. I, I, I don't know if that's a good enough blanket statement for, you oh. know, for COVID. I, I don't know if that's like, you know. Oh, build an I, immune system by getting it. You know, it's yeah. not like chicken pox or something. Yeah, you know, but a, yeah I totally when, understand. When we would talk about, I feel like when the term herd immunity first came around, mm-hmm. um, it was very, again, it was ran through this political lens, which is the dumbest fucking way to run logical thought through. Like, yes. Instantly, for some reason, we take everything important and we're like, and is it red or a blue idea? Is it conservative or Democratic? Or like, just... Dude. Can it's you just, just tell, so stupid. Yeah, it tells the truth. Yeah. Just, what, let's, what do you got back there? Let's talk about what's really going on. Yeah. Yeah. Like, don't run it through these lenses of how we should perceive things. Yeah. They have so many. It's muddying it. Yeah, because they have so many plans to try to fix this. And yeah, it's been a year, almost over, a year now. Yeah, over oh, yeah, a year. Oh, no. A little It'll over be a year. year. March. So to me, oh, okay. Mar- March 14th was the day to me. Yeah. Because for, I was working, I was working a big event actually up in Bellevue. Mm-hmm. And we had like, man, it was like two 2K high school students. And, and we're literally like, we got there and with like, we're setting up, we, we get there the day before and we're setting up this whole event mm-hmm. and uh stage, you know, chairs, everything, lights, cameras, yeah. the, the whole event. And, um, and then like, as we're setting up, it starts, we kind of get like trickles in some of the rigors are starting to get emails like yeah. of people canceling their upcoming gigs. And we're like, Oh shoot. And I had been watching the news. I had been watching this thing. From China, I'd been obsessively watching it. Oh from, yeah, from everyone Reddit. did. Yeah, yeah, it was it was unhealthy, dude. I was like literally before before bed every night since J- like January 2020. Yeah, I had basically started like like oh, I don't, every night would go to bed, Shaylee and I, and I'd be like, this 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 virus thing is weird, and I think that it might be a bad thing. Yeah, and well, we're both kind of like yeah, because that was like I think yeah, because it was the first. Well, they mentioned they supposedly was the first guy, right? Yeah. That like came over from, I think from China or yeah. from, came out for, out of the country into Washington, and it, I think it was. A, well, yeah, was it in Seattle? He, I, I think, think he the, the guy was from Bellevue, or oh, something. Interesting, of course. Yeah, no, because it seemed like it yeah. seemed like it was this very dangerous. When we were going to do the show, they were very yeah. debatable on like. We didn't know what it was. We wasn't like like what we know about COVID now and all the crazy repercussions and all the lockdowns mm-hmm. and the shutdowns and everything. Like that was not even a, a thought. Like we never thought this is so abnormal compared to how we have lived our life for the last, you know, 
30 years as a culture. Yeah. You know, it's it was it was very weird. It's um well, it's just because they talked about it a lot. Once you hear media talking about the one thing, mm-hmm. you're like, oh okay, and you keep hearing it, keep hearing it, keep hearing it. And you're mm-hmm, like, mm-hmm. oh, this must be serious, right? You right. know, it's like if there, it's like no one's talking about anything anymore. The one thing everyone's talking about is COVID. Yep, that's what our lives I mean, been filled with, and that's like like you said, it was like. During that time, it's like, man, what's the what's this COVID thing? So yeah. why is it such a big deal? Everyone's talking. That's what all because I yeah. I would like watch the news and I you know being uh, hanging out with Jack all the time. I'm working with him every day. All he did did was like listen mm. to the radio stations, you know, and like I haven't listened to the radio and so like actual stations until him. Yeah, a, a lot of older people still listen to a, a oh yeah, radio, radio that's stations. all I listen to in the car now. Like radio, yeah. yeah. So I was like, shit. And yeah, like you said, it's like, I was like, oh my gosh. It was funny because when that happened, I just so happened to buy a ton of masks. Oh, nice. Because I was getting COVID scared, you know? Yeah. And it was like, oh, we're not going to get this until, at the time, we, we're not going to get it until March. Mm-hmm. And so I ordered it like months before. And I, everyone was out. You couldn't get it. And uh-huh. I got it from uh, Amazon and I got it right at March. And that's, lucky. When, yeah. yeah. And then that's when the freaking lockdown happened. Wild. It, yeah. Yeah. It was Dude, crazy. It's, it's interesting noticing the changing tides of like how we react to it mm-hmm. as it goes along. You know, like yeah. when I, cause I started, the, I started this podcast last year and it's been over a year now. So it's been going for over a year, but I started it before COVID. Mm-hmm. And so like, trying to after i had quite a, i had a good amount of episodes in and then covid hits and i'm like i'm tr- i'm then trying to have this conversation with people talking about you know like talking about like their dreams or their aspirations or their like you know being a creator or whatever and i'm suddenly finding like i cannot get out of talking about covid where it's like yeah like, it's, what, we've been talking about covid for the last like 30 for, minutes yeah. or something yeah it, 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 but it, it's it's our part of our reality it's, yeah. you know it's, as much as i want to not talk about it i think that unfortunately and I know it sucks be in, in listeners, you know, if, if you're indulging in a lot of news about COVID, you've got to watch your mental health. You've got to, if it's getting to the point where you're like scared walking around, you're constantly thinking about it. The people you're listening to aren't helping you to like feel more safe and at ease or, mm-hmm. or, or understood even, um, you've got to almost take a break from it. Like now literally like COVID news is something you have to, it's like, you can't eat cheeseburgers all day you also can't fucking listen to people talk about the deaths and covid and all this stuff yeah. all day either yeah it's, yeah i know be it's about it yeah we change we change uh, yeah as it, as it grows because obviously yeah it's like i'm still taking the precaution precautions you know because mm-hmm. we have we have to you know it's like you can't go anywhere without wearing a mask and i'm mm-hmm. gonna obviously i gotta you know follow the rules to do whatever i want but it's just so hard now because now it's like you got to do all these, you know, procedures to go out, right? Mm-hmm. And it's, to me, it's so annoying that I got to do all this stuff that I don't even want to leave the house anymore. The only thing yeah. I we ever do, I'm like, I think, well, part, 90% of it is because I'm, we're trying to save money right now because we're building a house. And so, like, I don't really want to go out and eat. I like, I'm like, get what we need. That's all. Yeah. It's like, we got to stop eating out so much. And like, I'm like, you know, pinching pennies here it's not right. like we don't have money but there's a lot of ideas in my head that i want to do later for our our new yeah. house you know but at the same time like when going going out it's just like a whole thing you know it's like dude we got a kid blah 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 it's like trying to get out to a restaurant and it's like everyone's not wearing masks i'm like in my head i have that duality of uh oh i'm not scared of covid i got it and i survived but then the other one's like Shit! What if my daughter gets it? Yeah, her immune know. system yeah. is not there. Yeah, you know it's it's just not there. Yeah, and it's like has been built like up we yet. we've been to restaurants with her. Yeah, do do you find yourself kind of like I imagine you probably have like low level anxiety every time? Oh, every time, every yeah. time, yeah. every time we take her to like a grocery store or something like that, and everyone's wearing masks. The only reason why we don't put a mask on her is just because she rips it off every time yeah. and she starts she's crying. So, she's so young. And she's, she's so young. And she, still. oh yeah, she's not even one years old yet. And she's, or one, she's not even a year old. Sorry, I'm one years old. Nah, don't worry about that. I sound like an idiot right there. But she's not even a <laughs> year old yet. And it's like, do I even take her out? 
do I mm. freaking leave her at home and just, or do we not yeah. go anywhere or just buy our groceries online, blah, blah, blah. And then that's when I get too deep. I'm like, yep. uh, COVID scared. I'm right there. Dude, I, I, you know, and it's like, oh, totally. And like every time I just, I just got to remember to breathe. Mm-hmm, and I'm like, mm-hmm. everything's going to sure. be okay. Yeah. Everything's going to work out the way it should. And I think people need to start doing that. And I think, like I said, it's been blown out of proportion. And I think if anything, we're just so we're so divided as a country right now. Mm. That's that's my personal opinion. We are. Yeah. Uh, we are so divided, and we're not trying to figure this out mm-hmm. together. Mm-hmm. And the people, the people that know of COVID, they say they don't know. Government wise, mm-hmm. scientists that work for the government, they're just like, yeah, you just can't figure it out. I'm like, well, you figured out how to do a vaccine in nine months. I th- <laughs> think you can figure out like what's really going on. Like if you found something to fight our system or fight the COVID to not attack our system. Mm -hmm. Can you start like, why are we getting the vaccine so soon? Anything is possible at this point, right? Like how is this like, why are we, why are you making a vaccine where you still have to get a mask and you still can get (laughs) COVID, but you don't show the symptoms. Yeah. It's like, I thought, Mm, sorry I, I would just went to uh, don't apologize yeah, I get it it's yeah. th- these are things that we feel like we're not allowed to talk about because yeah. you know again there's there's cancel culture there's yeah. all this disagreement but it's okay because I think that we're all confused I think that you'll find that a lot of people probably relate with what you're saying I, I think a lot of people probably are like dude I'm confused as fuck about this whole thing too yeah. I don't know how to react I don't know if I'm overreacting I don't know if I'm underreacting mm-hmm. I don't know where to get the proper news I don't know who's telling the truth I don't know who's not yeah. telling the truth I, what we should have done, and this is something that I will I will say so many times, and I still think that it's important, and I think mm-hmm. that it's something that anybody could do, um, is what should have happened is at the beginning, we should have basically had someone, we should have had a leader, someone who's a fucking grown-ass man, mm-hmm. someone who is seriously responsible and who is yes. not caught up in the maze or the illusion of the, the WWE world of fucking politics yeah. or, or being a person at a podium in a shirt and tie. Mm-hmm. You know, had somebody come out and basically say, look, here's what we know. And they tell us what we know, what they know. Like we, you know, it, it came from Wuhan. We don't know right now at this point, if it came from a lab or not, mm-hmm. when we know something that is solidified that we can say, yes, it did. We will tell you general public. But right now, what we know is there is a dangerous virus that we as Americans yeah. are going to experience. It's going to change our lives. Sorry, but it is. We're going to go through this. Americans, as an American, like this person at the podium, as an American, like, I'm telling you the truth. We're going to go through some shit. Our next year is going to be rough. Our next two years, our next whatever is going to be rough. We're going to work on a vaccine. But in the meantime, what we need to do, everyone needs to work on their physical fitness. Everyone needs to strengthen their immune system. Here's the list of vitamins that you should be taking every day. Vitamin D, vitamin C, zinc, like whatever. Like all all the, you know, we should have had somebody at this, what I'm saying, someone at a podium at the beginning of COVID should have said, we don't know. Yeah. We do not know. Mm-hmm. I'm going to be honest with you. Here's what I think is going to happen. But instead, we had like the lies about the masks. Don't wear masks. Do wear masks. Masks yeah. don't work. Masks do work. Yeah. Uh, wear two masks. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Wear, wear 17 masks yeah. and don't ever leave your house. Yeah, exactly. Is it like we didn't have our, our our political system is the way in which information is given to the people in in. I think we're realizing that's not the best way anymore because we saw what happened. We should have had a motherfucker. We should have had like Jocko Willink. I don't know if you know who that is, but he's like a, mm-hmm. a Navy SEAL guy who's like, he's yoked. He wakes up at 4 a.m. every day and works out. And he's like one of the most inspiring, motivational. Oh, is it? He's that guy where that wears the beanie like super low or something. And he starts yelling at the camera. Um, probably that might be David Goggins. Oh, okay. Yeah. But I mean, there's a lot of like really built guys. I get yelling at the camera and that makes me laugh. I'm like, where did this guy come from? Bless him. Yeah. I'm like, dude, thank you for making me laugh, dude. It's like, are you like this all the time? Like, probably probably that intense all the time. (laughs) Sir, what do you want? Chocolate milkshake right now. <laughs> I need a number seven. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, yeah. I want it. And then he says like some motivational thing yeah. right after. And then it's like, drink your milk. And Give then that's it. Seven. Yeah, Believe that, in yourself. Yeah. Believe in <laughs> <laughs> Well, no, but dude, yeah. uh, this is, okay, this is yeah. truly what I think. Like, I really generally think that at the beginning, that's what we should have had. We yeah. should have had somebody, I, I don't give a fuck who it was. 
I think at the, at the point when it happened, we're so untrusting of all of our politicians, especially, mm-hmm. you know, we want to, in our hearts, like what we've learned so far, we want to trust, we wanted to trust Donald Trump because he was the president at the time. Yeah. What, what, what I, I wish would have happened is without all the bullshit, without all the, I'm this, you're that, you're bad other, I'm on this side, yeah. these people are liars, Fauci's this or whatever, yeah. all the crap, all the fun and games that we played in mm-hmm. our reality TV show of politics. I wish that someone came out and just said, like I said, just, hey yeah, guys, just lay it all out. This man. is going to be rough and we're going to need each other. We're going to need your, we're all humans. We have 300 million fucking people in, in, in the U S I think it's somewhere around 300 yeah. million, but like it's time to come together because this is going to be the hardest year of our lives in the last, you know, 40, 50, 30 years, whatever it is. Here's how to take care of your immune systems. If you know something that we don't, you know, get a hold of us. Let's work together. Let's get our smartest people on this. Let's get this, whatever. But it turned into, you yeah. know, all this, all this madness. And we're still confused. It's a, over a year later or, you know, almost mm-hmm. a year later. And we're still confused how to talk about it, what we're allowed to talk about. We're nervous to talk about it. Like mm-hmm. we're literally like nervous to have an opinion on it because we're, you know, we don't want to get canceled. We don't want to get, we don't want to cause yeah. arguments, but we're all, we're all just humans experiencing a fucking virus. Yeah. And we we're, need to be able to handle it together. Yeah. It, it It's not what, you know, when you take a look back in history, history, especially being an American, a lot of things that happen, anything bad. And I'm talking about throughout history, like here, like somehow, some way we always came in together as a country. Mm-hmm. How did something this bad divide us so hard and i'm not not talking just black lives matter i'm not talking about the left wing or right right wing during Mm -hmm. the president presidential election i'm not talking about that kind of stuff right now i'm talking about a major event let's take that into play let's take all the times that in history as in america Anything that bad happened, we came together mm-hmm. and overcame whatever. Mm-hmm. How is this any different? How right. how is this dividing us? Yeah. Because right now, this is the, I think. I mean, no matter what, like some generations, like oh, we went through the worst one. We went through the worst one. You know, yeah. But right now, we're going through another one. Mm-hmm. How is that? How are we not coming together? How are we? Yeah. How are we canceling people? How are we? being so afraid to open up and talk about our opinion, even if it's right or wrong. Cause right now it's like, I'm scared to even say a word, but now I'm saying it all on podcast. Now everyone can hear it, but right. it, it's, get, sca- it's scaring that, yeah. me. It's like, how, how am I afraid to talk? Cause mm-hmm. I feel like I, right now it's like freaking add up, you know, add it up. You're going to cancel me. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I can't wait because yeah. ask me if I care because I'm a, I'm a nobody. But I have an opinion that probably nobody likes right now. You know, a lot of people don't like. Maybe I'm hopefully someone that is listening and like feels the same way I do. But I'm not saying like, oh, let's gang up. I'm like, I'm saying like, I I hope I'm not alone mm, on this. Sure, dude. And it's like, but it, it's hard hard to say. Like I said, yeah. I, I like I have this like I'm I'm half and half right now, and it's yeah. hard to say. I'm not saying like, oh, I'm just gonna sit here in the middle and not have an opinion about it. You know, mm-hmm. it's like I, I have my opinions and right now I, I just feel like I've never been so confused on how to live my life till Dude. W- in this last year. Amen. That I, I'm so mm-hmm. lost. Like yeah. it, it sucks. I don't, I don't even know how to be myself without offending anybody, without scaring anybody. And I, I I don't know. Yeah. I, it, it's hard. It's hard right now. A hundred percent. I mean, I, I think I, I will say just from having, cause I'm, I, I'm a pretty, I'm, I, you know, I, I have my times of tiptoeing for sure. Mm-hmm. And I have my times of all listen back to old episodes where I'm like, I had, I had one when the, when the black lives matter for stuff first started, I had uh, my friend Mikayo who's, mm-hmm. who's, who's black and I had him on. And I remember like listening back is cringy. I, it's, like I was so uncomfortable. I was like trying to tiptoe around. I'm like, Hey, like, how do I talk about this as a white person? Blah, blah, blah. But I was almost like, I was almost like trying to talk to my friend about this thing from a place of 
from a place within me that wasn't even my truth. Mm-hmm. Like I, I was denying my inner truth of what I'm actually like. It's like, wait, mm-hmm. I, I don't even like, I don't, I don't think about like what racy is. We don't ever really talk about it. We're just homies. I don't know. <laughs> like what, whatever, like if he wants to talk about it, cool. Like let's talk about it. Let's, let's learn about each other, whatever. But, um, w- watching myself tiptoe, but it's because all of these kind of like self editing tools that are imposed onto us, like our yeah. culture, our media, our news, all this stuff. It tells you that you should be nervous to talk about these things. It tells you that you should like make sure you don't say one wrong thing because you're you're going to get canceled or whatever it is, or you're going to get like we're going to find out where you work and we're going to make sure they fire you or we're going to uh, you know uh, come for you in this way. What I will say, Ryan, is from me being I'm fairly I'm fairly exuberant about my opinions. I'm, I try to be unafraid. It's difficult, honestly. Like I like sometimes I'm like, I don't know what exactly I think, but I try to stumble through it on the podcast. The amount of messages that I get of people with appreciation saying, I think that same thing. I wasn't able to even formulate it into words until I heard you talk about it that way. Mm -hmm. And like, honestly, I just want to say, I totally agree. And thank you for saying what you're saying. Like I get those messages. And Mm -hmm. so I want to say just as your friend and has someone who's having you on their podcast, like I, I would be willing to bet that more people are going to agree with you than not because you, you haven't said anything wrong. You haven't said anything arrogant. Yeah. You're, you're someone who you're, you're a new father who got COVID. You're someone who's experienced COVID. You're, you're mm-hmm. someone who's just trying to live your life and trying to, you know, you're, you're trying to get into a new house. You're trying to, to, to raise your family, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. and you're suffering this just like all these other people, man, we're all brothers and sisters in this. Yeah. We're all suffering and we're all taking this information from, you know, the Eric Weinstein calls it the uh, gated institutional narrative. Yeah. And, uh, it, it's basically like this, this narrative of how things go. Mm-hmm. And if you step out of it, it's like, Ooh, like that's not what we talk about. Like you yeah, might, you might get ostracized. Yeah. We're, we're gonna we're gonna kick you out of our tribe here if you if you talk in the wrong way and we got to be not not afraid to talk about it yeah. like I, like we're all fucking going through this COVID thing the lockdowns the shutdowns the craziness the politics yeah. the the crazy stories that they make us fight about the things that they put in front of us and they tell yeah. us that are important or whatever it's all adding up it's all the same thing it's all something that we're all dealing with and. Yeah. I think talking about it truthfully is is yeah, legitimately you, helpful to people. Yeah, you should you should be able to. I mean, yeah, it just sucks, you know. Yeah. We're, just, we're all going through. We're, it. we're living. Yeah, we're all going through it, and that's why I don't understand like how we how are we all not getting together and figuring this out mm-hmm. and like how to better the situation at hand. Yeah, but no, it's right now. It's like when once you get that, it just just so happens, you know, it was uh, the election, so it's like right there, boom. Let's divide the people. Divide the people, mm-hmm. and so if you make like, it through that, yeah. And then that they made the argument. It's like, well, what are you gonna do about COVID? Blah blah blah. And you know, it's like, oh, we're gonna do this. Oh, we should do that. And it's like, then you got these people bashing. You know, it's like, then you get the riots, and then you get storming the Capitol, and mm-hmm. it's like, what has happened? It's so much has happened within this year. It's insane to me mm-hmm. i'm like this is a time we're living through well kids in the future this is history right now yeah not like the past few years yeah some stuff happened you know a lot of major yeah. things happen you know but not like this yeah you know this is the stuff that kids are going to read about yeah i hope we're all in agreement of that bro. i hope Oh no, they will. Okay, I'm just saying, it's like, if anything happens, yeah. if this like a oh, whole collapse, unless it's offensive to read about, and then they're gonna take yeah, it out yeah, of the books. Yeah, it's like we we <laughs> 2020 and 2021, we really don't talk about that. Yeah, we don't talk. It hurts a lot of people's feelings. Yeah, so we, we can't talk about it. Yeah, you know, we, do, we, we just we had to burn the books, just like mm-hmm. to kill a mockingbird. We had to take them off the shelf. Yeah, you know? it's, it's kind of like a like it's one of those things like you know you read through the chapters. It's like people are reading through history about like the year 20. Uh, 2020 and then 2021 it's like the elevator right you don't have floor 13 <laughs> right because we're superstitious yeah, yeah. exactly so yeah. 2020 and 2021 never happened we don't talk about it yeah if someone brings it up people are like oh you know what are you talking about it's like no no we, we talk about the future only that was a bad year yeah. for us you know what I, I really do think though actually ryan i think that <laughs> i think that looking back though you know in a few years I think a lot of the core of our problem is technology and, and, and te- by technology, I guess I mean, um, uh, 
we've updated the way we do things so fast in mm-hmm. the way our news works, the way social media works, the mm-hmm. way information gets spread across. Like I've used this example right now, as you and I are talking on this podcast, I could FaceTime someone in China. I could hit yes. And suddenly we're talking, we basically have a portal into being able to see another part of the world yeah. at this exact moment, right? Like yeah, you can exactly. look through this little window called an iPhone and someone could like face their camera at Tokyo. Yeah. And I'm all of a sudden I'm looking at a live stream of Tokyo. That's fucking crazy. Like for what human species have experienced thus far, as far as we know, this is the first time we've ever experienced anything like this. Yeah. Is it, we're the we're the ushers in of all this all this new technology. And I think it's so overwhelming. I think the way we react to it is so overwhelming. I think that the people in charge, the people in shirts and ties, the people at podiums, um, who are you know, kind of supposed to be our first line of defense on like how to articulate and how to understand this yeah. advanced technological communication that we have now. They have no fucking idea what they're doing. Hence why it's so confusing with COVID. Yeah. It's all divisive. Everyone's scared. Everyone's blaming each other. We need intelligent people. And I'm hoping over these next couple of years, young people, I think young people, like I think young people are going to be in leadership roles over our next like five years or so. Yeah. Um, you know, I don't have like a bunch of facts to back this up. This is just, you know, maybe a thought experiment or a, a prediction based yeah. off of, you know, my own mind. But I, I think young people are going to be stepping up in very heroic, brave ways. And they're going to be the logical thinkers. I think they're going to be like, look, this technology, we don't understand it as well as we think we do. Mm-hmm. Getting information like, you know, we're talking about, it just doesn't add up that these numbers mean we should shut down all the businesses. Mm-hmm. I think we're going to learn that we have all these facts, we have all these statistics, mm-hmm. but the way we interpret them and say, whoa, this is this, and so it means we should do this, the way we interpret the facts yeah, is what needs to change. The way we process the information and give it out to the people, to the general public, the people who are not scientists, the people who are not mathematicians, mm-hmm. the people who are not news reporters, like the way we process it will be changed. So I think on the... It, I don't know if it's going to be super soon, to be honest. I think we might have like a, a little bit more time of some some weirdness. And, you know, I, I don't know if the politics thing is over now that Trump's out or whatever. It's like that madness. I don't know if that's mm-hmm. going to calm down. But I think in, in a few years, maybe five years, we're going to we're going to start having some smart, young, new thinkers standing at podiums or, or talking to people through a microphone or, or through YouTube or our virtual reality world, whatever we have at yeah. that point. And it's going to make a little more sense. I think that as a species, we're just overwhelmed and we're confused at this whole thing. And we, we're we going to have times, we're going to have plenty of people who are going to remind us that, like, hey, we're all in this together, man. Like, we're not, it's it's not us against us. Like, it's, it's us against the ability to process information properly mm-hmm. and make the correct decisions to, you know, give us all fulfilled life, you know? Yeah. It's, so I, I'm optimistic, I think, in some aspects, as much as this is all crazy and ridiculous and I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow, mm-hmm. I do feel a sense of optimism. Yeah, me too. I, I hope so. I shit. mean, it'll be hard. You know, it's a lot of people to convince. Yeah. It's a lot of people. But, you know, it could be us. You never know. It you could change. Know. It, you know, it's like, how do you get to that point? How, like, how do, you, how do you get to that point where you're someone is realizing how we're so sick of the way things are going right now for someone to have that one voice, Mm. you know? And I'm not just saying just, when I say one voice, I'm not saying one person to have the voice to try to change and get people together and work with each other again, Mm. you know? Where was that, you know? And... It sucks because, like, when I say earlier about, like, America always has gotten together, obviously there's things going on, like, especially back then. I mean, you had, you know, segregation and all that crap, Mm -hmm. and I understand that. You know, I'm not just saying it. I'm not pulling this out of my ass. Like, I don't know about history. You know, it's just, if you want to talk about history, let's talk about history because I watch, that's the one thing that my dad and embedded into me was like dude if you don't learn history Mm -hmm. and this will always be embedded into my head which why i will teach my daughter is if you don't learn history it will repeat itself 
and people a lot of people nowadays don't pay attention to that it's like oh blah 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 this happened and it's like you know that already happened it happened before yeah and and people yeah, nowadays have a map for how this goes yeah there it's yeah it's called learning history yeah the learning not and it sucks because history yeah. it's a little weird yeah. because if you get into the school history obviously the school books they're only going to teach you what they want to teach you. Mm -hmm. That's what, mm, that's another subject, but. They're going to paint you the picture they want you to know. Exactly. So, and the history that you learn, the winner writes history every single time. Mm. And that's, that's what gets me. That's huge. Yeah. It, it's, uh, so you got, you got to learn. You can't just learn from school. It, it's okay to be that nerd and going out and learning further than what you're being taught. Look at both sides of the spectrum. Yeah. You, you can't just look at one and believe whatever you... It's like seeing is believing, right? You can't just like read a book. It's like, oh, did you know this happened? I'm like, oh, okay. Were you there? Did you go out and investigate? Did you try to look for the documents or whatever? Because there's a whole thing. Because the reason why that was written was because people did that, right? Right. It, over time, yeah. collecting this uh, information and everything else. But it's like the what's that game of the whisper game where you like tell it? Oh yeah, someone a secret, and then you everyone tells that and tries yeah, to repeat you'll, it. Yeah, you'll, you'll be like the yellow octopus jumped over the purple dog. Yeah, and then by the time it you whispered in the ear of you know five people, by the time it gets to that person, it's like the blue ostrich ate bananas. Yeah, what? Yeah, and you're like what? That's not at all what I said, but mm -hmm. just five people. Yeah, it's yeah. just, you know, it's like everything's just is. lost. Yeah, yeah it's, everything's like lost in translation, you know? Yeah. And, uh, you know, it's like you, you think you learn some things, but you're so far from it. Mm -hmm. And that's and that's what gets me. I, that's like something I, weirdly I think of every day of like everything I know, everything I've ever learned, everything that I was ever taught how to be and doing the right thing. Is it really right? Mm. Was I taught the right way? Some things it, it, you can't trick. Some things are exact, like math, numbers. Mm. No matter how you do math, yep. you're going to get the same thing. It, there's an answer. There's always an answer, right? But when you're talking about other situ situations that we go through every day, yeah. where we're taught history, um, the way to live, reli it's not like that. religion, what you believe like what you believe in it that confuses me every single day the, i don't mean to yeah i i just it's every morning i'm just like bro, not sorry not every morning but right before i go to bed i'm like just sitting there i'm trying to listen to music to block out the noise that i have in my head which is a voice and it's funny because the voice i have in my head is not me not saying that i feel like i have like weird personality Some other person or something yeah, yeah, yeah it's like i have like a split personality but yeah. it's like me thinking these thoughts of like it goes to am I a good father? Am I a good husband? Am I a good friend? Am I a good son? Because I'm only going by what was presented to me mm -hmm. at the time. And I'm really appreciative of like how I grew up because I did have I did have parents. Loving, very loving parents that taught me the way they were raised. Was it right? To someone else? No not you know and i take that in sorry and uh sometimes i feel like i'm like a piece of shit because i take everything i have for granted yeah and i try not to like i just like try to block it out and i hate that i get to that point every night because I work so hard trying to to be a good person. And I feel I I feel like I haven't reached it yet. And I don't I don't understand like why I have these thoughts in my head. It's not like I don't want to like kill myself or anything. You know, I've had those thoughts. But it gets to that point. It's like how do I change that? How do I um teach my daughter the right things if I don't know. Right. 
Yeah, I get that. What's right and wrong. How do I become a better dad? What's a good dad? How do I become a better husband? You only can see you're you're only taught so much in this world. Right. And uh it's hard. Yeah. It's crap I think about it every night. I don't go to bed until like two. I try to. Yeah, just stay up trying right. to like think yeah. about these things. Yeah. Just block out the noise. That's why I listen to like try to listen to podcasts. I try yeah. to do whatever, but I end you... up turning it off and trying to figure out like how can I live a fulf- fulfilled life mm-hmm. without to blocking the noise of every day? Yeah. Of everyone telling me how to live life, yeah. how to make life better. And because you don't know if it's right, you know, yeah. like, do I listen to you or do I listen to my yeah. intuition or do I? Sorry about that. I didn't mean don't to. Don't apologize, buddy. Yeah, but it's weird. Do you, do, you, do you think that, do you think that you get down on yourself like, like, thinking you should know as, as, in, as in like, oh, like, why don't I have the answers? You know, yeah. like, is I mean, like, like it's, it it's like... not so much that it's like, man, I just feel like every day I'm just unprepared. Mm. You know, I know my job. I know how to do that. That's a one, two, three thing. Yeah. But when it comes to me, like how I talk, how I act or react to certain situations, it's not, let's say I'm going to put this in like electrical terms. It's not up to code mm. to the way other people think, you know, mm-hmm. it's, uh, okay. it's hard. I think it just has to do with this like situation we're living in right now. It's, it's hard to right. express who you are without offending anybody. And it's hard to, um, think without being controlled. Like, like I said, it's like, it's, it's hard to state your opinion without someone in trying to bash it. Right. And it's like, okay, well, I'm not going to act like that. But slowly and slowly over the last few years, I feel like I've just just been losing myself. Yeah. And I don't mean you're trying to, to figure out what's right. Yeah. Like and it, fi- it's weird because you think that you should know this by now. Most people, you know, it's like, I get it. Like most people don't find themselves until they have that weird... Oh, I just finally find myself out. This is who I am. Mm. I'm gonna stick to it. Blah blah Some blah. Experience or yeah. Yeah, and I I I thought I knew until like I don't know like a few months ago. I wasn't like feeling down or anything. I was like having these crazy thoughts, you know. And I and it's it's crazy to me to think that I thought I knew who I was. Mm-hmm. That I had my figure it myself. This is this is who I am. This is this is gonna be me, and hope everyone knows about it. Mm. And I, it, it's like I put this shell, this facade, over who, over someone, over the real me. Mm. You know, it's not like it didn't have to do with who I married. She didn't like change me. I feel like I'm still. It's like things that I'm I think it's just been comparing myself to people where right. I th- where I think I should be and mm-hmm. how I should act or it I think that's huge right there. Yeah. And yeah, it's just it's just weird. I I don't mean to have these thoughts, but you know, right. I'm only human. Dude, you're not alone in that. That's what I'm yeah. saying. Like I really feel like you're not alone in that. Yeah. I, I think a lot of people are going through this right now of like yeah. fuck dude, like what do I do? Like how do I raise my kid good? Like, I don't want to, yeah. you know, like, cool, my, my parents love me, but now that I see where, you know, I would have probably done differently, like, how do I make that an actual reality? Like, how do I really do that? Yeah. How do I, like, what information do I tell my daughter? Like, what, who do I tell her to trust? Because right now I don't trust any of our institutions. I don't trust any of our, you yeah. know, all, th- there's so much craziness going on. There's yeah. so much, um, you know, new complicated ways of thinking and stuff. It makes sense to always be to be, you know, trying to find out like, am I doing this right? Yeah. And, and I think Ryan, because you're such a, you're such a caring and sweet person that you inevitably, even if it wasn't your family, and of course your family adds tenfold to it. Yeah. You want to do things right, man. Like, yeah. like you, you want to do the right thing. You've, since I've always known you, 
Like yeah. you, you want to do the right thing. You, you want to make people feel good and you want to be yourself too. Yeah. But like sometimes if you're editing yourself and you're like, like, is this the right thing to say? Like, I, like I'm not trying to hurt anybody's feelings. Like I, I think that like I, we, we were talking about earlier, I know you. So whatever you're saying, I know your intent. Yeah. Like you were saying, you were listening to our, our first episode like a year ago. Yeah. Like, and you're wondering like, oh, I said the wrong thing or I, I, uh, I didn't explain myself uh, how I wanted to or how I thought I was or whatever. But since I know you, I know your intent. Like yeah. I'm here, I'm able to look you in the eye and yeah. I know, you know, like we can almost finish each other's sentences in a sense because like yeah. I understand what you're communicating deep down. But yeah. I think that sometimes, and especially nowadays in this in this world, the words themselves are what we get caught up on. The words themselves are like tripwires. Mm -hmm. And and that's where we get nervous about like, oh, I like I want to say the right thing. I want to do the right thing. But I think that what the true humanness within all of us, mm -hmm. the the way that we really communicate with each other is intentionality. Yeah. And and it's like you you want to with all of your actions, with the way that you teach your daughter, with the way that you speak to your wife, with mm -hmm. the way that you talk to your coworkers, with the way that you interact with your boss, like underlying that, because I know you, you're trying to do the right thing mm -hmm. in all of those situations. Yeah. But the world is so complicated right now. The world is so weird right now. The world's so so messy. And when I say the world, I guess let's say the way that we see the world because of yeah. the lens that's painted for us yeah. in America, let's say. Yeah. But the intentionality is not always communicated. So I don't know. I, I think that something something good to remember and try to try to remember is like like go, going back to yourself like some, sometimes i think ryan would get caught up with like other people's voices and we yeah. mistake them for our own like you know th there's always a part part within us me especially like you know I, me, me too i i'm always trying to like oh, how can i do better like how can i how can i yeah. be more how can i improve myself how can i be Jake 2.0 in that situation. How could I, oh, I fucked up. Like, how could I make sure I never fuck up again? Yeah. You know, that's a good thing, but we also have to be gentle with ourselves because I think deep down, you got to remember to like remind yourself like, dude, I'm fucking, I'm doing my best. I'm doing my yeah. best. My, I'm doing my best. Yeah. Not, I'm not doing Arnold Schwarzenegger's best because yeah. his best honestly might be better than mine. And that's okay. Yeah. He's not in my shoes. He's not living my life. You know, I, I think we're all, we're all trying to operate with the life that we've been handed. We're trying to yeah. to teach others around us and teach our family members, teach our daughters, teach our whatever it is, yeah. based off of what we learned from our parents and what we learned from our community, our our you know our uh, lived experience around us, yeah. but also like our intuition, our inner feelings. Yeah. So I think I think it's like it's it's so hard, man. But like we got to try to remember to be fucking kind to ourselves yeah. and like really, really be able to like, like, do, do you think right now? And, and I, I mean, I, I've, I like, correct me if I'm wrong, but I feel like you could probably like, if, if you looked in the mirror right now you, and, and you looked in your eyes and you said like, Hey, I'm, I'm doing my best. Yeah. Like, could you, could you believe that? Like, do, do you, do you, do you feel like, like you're and not your best, like, Oh, I could be doing more, but like really, truly like, like you, you knowing you don't have all the answers, yeah. you're not a magical being, yeah. you know, you're, you're a human with flaws and yeah. emotions yeah. and experiences. Like I'd be willing to bet Ryan that you're, you're doing the best you can. Right. Yeah. I, I can honestly say that I, if I look in the mirror, I'm like, dude, I work my ass off, you know? Yeah, you do. I, I you know, sometimes I'm just like, uh, consciously not there. Like. I'd say sometimes because I just been working so hard lately. It's just like it's super busy right now, mm -hmm. you know. But it's like I come home, say hi to my daughter, say hi to my wife, you know. And sometimes I'm just so disconnected. It's just because like I'm just like at the end of the day, I'm just like, oh my gosh, I'm tired. Right, right. But like I'm like, hey, you know what? I'm doing this for us, you know. It's just like sometimes I just want to unplug for a bit. But that's not, I can't do that though. I try not, I try not to, but I, I just do it because like I'm physically tired, mm. you know, I'm up down ladders <clears throat> all day, you know, and just like trying to wire these houses and right. like, so I'm physically moving, carrying things yeah. for about 10, 11 hours a day. Well, and you're a fast thinker too. So your yeah. brain's also working. Yeah, exactly. That's and you have to, because it's like time is money. You yeah. know, like in that industry, it's like, dude, if you don't do this, we're like, and he sets the schedule out. If yeah. we're longer 
if we're there longer than we're supposed to, we just lost money. Yeah. You know, so time is money. So I'm like, I'm constantly yeah. thinking, I'm constantly doing math, measurements and everything else. So by the time I get home, I just, you know, like I- Tired. Yeah, I'm tired. You're freaking tired, Yeah, man. dude, I don't even have time for me. I, dude, I can't remember the, like the last time, I said that weird, remember <laughs> the last time I sat down and played video games. Like, oh, really? I think it was like maybe a month ago. Huh. I played for like a, I think a couple hours or yeah. like- a, Maybe a little nighter thing, but I think that's the last time I play. I don't like play. Like, yeah. like everyone knows that. Like every time a new system comes out, I got it. Yeah. I'm buying it. This is the first year I never got like the new PS5 yeah. or something or Xbox, whatever. Dude, I'm like, dude, I don't have time for that. You yeah. know what I have time for? Something learning how to like update my truck, All right? And or watching detailing See, videos at night and this is like one o'clock in the morning well, because you're doing your best yeah so i'm That's doing exactly my right. best but it, you know it's like it's not so much uh that i i i i um i feel like i'm so down on myself i i feel i feel like i can do more not just for my family you know i feel like i could i see people who are struggling because i mm. can't be you know like when i was emotional about that i just like i just want to help out people I, that's like my intention yeah. to be a good how do i become all these things and also help and make people aware of what's going on and helping them out because right, right now it's like why am i complaining when people are struggling so hard and i have money right now building a house a right. brand new house in these times yeah you well, know? okay. I mean, it's not like you're like a millionaire and yeah. you're fucking like, oh, I've got yeah. my jet flying in my magic bricks to build my mansion yeah. house with the pool. It's not like that. It's like you're yeah. just you're li you're I'm trying just... to live your life and maintain building a family and, and yeah. a home for your family, bro. Yeah. There's nothing you should feel guilty about at all. Mm -hmm. uh, I I I think I think I'd be willing to bet that more people would relate with exactly what you're fucking going through, yeah. like the pressure we put <clears throat> on ourselves, yeah, and the pressure that like. Someone who just cares about other people and yeah. cares about, of course, your family. Like your family is going to be first and foremost. Like I yeah. care about you the most. Like, uh, like, I I want to be good for you. I want to I want to do my best for you. Mm. I want to learn what I can so I can teach you whatever it is. But then there's also you know you also got to deal with the facts that you're a biological creature who gets tired, man, and that's okay. Yeah. Like you you work all day and you use your brain all day. You know, uh, chess chess masters. Like they, they've been known to uh, burn 6,000 calories during a chess mass, like a grandmaster chess player. Really? 6,000 calories from sitting there thinking. That hard? Really? Yeah, you can apparently. burn from thinking? Uh, apparently, yeah. I mean, That's I wish probably I had Jamie, why I'm so somebody skinny. fact check me on that, but I'm pretty sure. Yeah, yeah. I've, I've heard about this. I was just listening to it not that long ago. but That has to be why I'm... But dude, it, it really yeah. is It really is 100% a thing. When you're using your brain, That's it's it's tiring, you know? And yeah. and also another thing you're, you haven't been doing this for that long. Like, like, you know your shit now with electrician, yeah. but as, as it gets longer, as it's more years, it's not going to be as draining for you. I, I don't imagine. No, it, but, it's getting to the point where it's like, it's getting pretty easy, yeah. but that's just because I've been, um, you know, taking my medication, been taking my yeah. Adderall, you know? So thinking has gone skyrocketed. Yeah, yeah. Like I, when I can, on the one well, yeah, yeah, the focus, to to be able to focus and not stand because like people at work used to make fun of me because I would be standing in the middle of a room looking at what I'm doing and just not doing anything and they'd be like dude what are you doing I'm like thinking I'm I, and I totally together. forgot what I was thinking about and I'm like, well, and but I bet you if they never walked into that room, you wouldn't have thought, you wouldn't have forgot what you were thinking about. Yeah, like if they would have left you alone, you probably would have. Yeah, resumed where you yeah. needed to go. Well, yeah, and because my biggest thing is I couldn't multitask. Mm. That was my biggest thing. It's getting it's getting a lot better. I mean, it's still like you know you you just see remnants of it, right? But after you know being on the medication, what since uh, I want to say December, I want to say November December is when I started it. Dude, it's I don't do that anymore. I don't stand around in a room. I I already know what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. I don't because in my head, because when now I will think about what I'm doing, and then um, instead of standing there and thinking about what I need, this wire goes there, their power switch leg, blah blah blah. 
it's me doing that while I'm doing whatever I'm doing. Mm. And I'm like thinking about the next steps. I'm like, okay, this goes here, blah, blah, blah. Right. When I was standing there, I was routing everything I was yeah. doing. You're walking through it. Yeah, I was walking through it. And that's what I, I didn't get in trouble, but it was like, it was a stern, hey, get moving. It's like, yeah. hold on, I, I, I'm trying to plan you're like, this you're thing like, I'm out. I'm working. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, dude, that's the thing we, we were talking about before this, of just the the difference in the way that people think. Like, yeah. we're, we're all just very different people. You yeah. know, it's, I, I have, uh, I think you were saying something similar, like, like your doctor might have been explaining it in a similar way, but when I had gone in, when I talked to my doctor about um, ADHD and Adderall, mm-hmm. um, he was kind of explaining to me in, in similar ways of like, you know, it's it's not that like there's something wrong with you. It's yeah. not that it's not that the way that you think is broken. It's not that the way you think is like some sort of death sentence. It's mm-hmm. like when you have ADHD, when you have like your the focus center point pilot of your decision making doesn't always have the ability to choose the right importance. Mm-hmm. But then but then and, and that's just one aspect of it. And then another aspect Sometimes, whereas someone else would just do something and figure it out along the way, yeah. sometimes it takes like, all right, I need 10 minutes to draw this out in my head because I don't even fully conceptualize mm-hmm. how this works. And if it doesn't work, so so for me, th- this might connect. For me, I have trouble focusing on things that I'm not interested in. And that's like a weird no, blanket no, statement, that's right? Like total, that's, it's totally almost like me. a lazy, I, I, yeah. I feel like I'm saying I'm lazy basically yeah. when I say that. Mm-hmm. But it's 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 untrue. Like so, in that situation where you're trying to wire up a house, yeah, you're not going to have as much interest in doing. All right, here's my step one. Step one, I need to go to this socket right here, and I'm mm-hmm. going to start with these wires. That's step one, and that's going to create the whole electrical circuit around the house. Yeah. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but if 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 I was in that situation, and I didn't fully understand the whole, the big picture, mm-hmm. if I didn't know what I was doing, like how does this one socket that I'm doing affect the whole electricity of the building and what I'm actually doing, like what my job is, mm-hmm. I would not only not fully understand how to stay focused on this one task because I'd be perplexed on how I'm seeing the bigger picture, but I would also not be very interested in this task. Yeah, Like it wouldn't be interesting for me to do because in my brain, I'm not able to organize it into the this is important folder Mm -hmm. and so i think a lot of times people with adhd they have um maybe maybe um an inability in comparison to other people to prioritize what they would say is important so we almost have to draw the picture in a completely different way yeah so you're saying where other people would probably walk in the room and they just start with this thing and then when they get to the next one they're going to do it Mm -hmm. you've got to stand in that fucking room and visualize it yeah you've got to see what you're doing you've got to build like okay what does the puzzle really look like Mm-hmm. Now I'm gonna pick up the pieces, and now I'm gonna start putting it together. Yeah, you know, yeah, that it, it's kind of like that. You know, it's like, and to add to that, when I'm doing that, when I was just standing there thinking, it would be uh, because there's always more than one way to wire something. Mm. That was the thing, mm. and it got caught in my head. I'm like, I could either do this, I could do that, or this, and. It's funny to me because uh, my father-in-law, he would be like, Ryan, there's three ways to do something. Choose the right one. And it's like you have to like because he's been doing it for like 35, 36 years right, or something right, like that. Right. So he knows when he wires our house, he knows when he comes back on trim to do whatever. He knows exactly where he put the wire. He's like, I wire, I wire the same thing. They're houses. They're easy. It's one, two, three deal, which I know in my head now for, you know, just doing it for three years. That's how I think exactly like him now. Mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, well, when I walked in the house, this is where I would put it, blah, blah, blah. This is where I put a homer, blah, blah, blah. This this is how you do it because if you keep doing it the same way, you will never screw up later and you will know every time where the power is coming from, where you put the switch leg and how you wired it. Right, yeah. Now I'm, I'm at that level. But before I wasn't, and so I was like, dude, I I can't get, to, I don't understand what you're doing, especially like I I was in construction before, mm. I, I was a desk guy, I, I was a salesman, I went to, I drove in a car, wore some nice shirt so I can sell something to you that you probably didn't want anyways, <laughs> you know, and I never did, like, 
Got to get them in that microfiber black shirt, bro. Uh, dude, you have to. Uh, it always looks better. Uh, dude, once you upgrade, you can never go back. Yeah. <laughs> so um, it was that. It's like it was a different way of thinking, and I wasn't used to that, especially fast pace. Mm -hmm. I was I'm like when I thought something through, I love to think about it for a long time and think about it. You know, just like I like details. Mm hmm. What what really like where did this stem from? Mm -hmm. How does it work? I like that. I like the slow pace. This job, no. Yeah. That is go. out yeah. the window. Right. You better know what you're doing in and out because like I said before, time is money. Mm. Which is a lot of jobs. You so, know? But it's like, can you think fast enough? And that wasn't me. I couldn't because I would think about every single possibility right. on how to do something. I'm like, dude, you can't just go with one because you got this one. Right. This one, this one. What's the easiest way? Mine, because I'm, dude, I'm lazy. I am probably the laziest person that you will probably meet. And I'm not saying that I- I think you're redefining the word lazy here, though. Yeah, exactly. But it's not saying that I sit on the couch all day and right. not do take care of my kid or whatever, or not clean up. I'm a very clean person. Everything's done. Yeah. But how, how am I going to do that step Faster than I was go going to before yeah. and still have an effective way to do it. It's another way of saying like, what's, what's basically, what's the best way to do this? Oh in, yeah. In a sense. I yeah. Mean, it's like, call it lazy, but. yeah, I, yeah, I do. Like I said, I'm the laziest person you'll probably ever meet, but I'm going to get the job done yeah. and probably better than it was before. I think it was, it was either Steve Jobs or Steve Wozniak, uh, who said, uh, uh, it was like, I, I'd rather hire the lazy person. Um, because they know how to get the job done faster or they know the, the mm. shortcuts to getting the job done. It's something like yeah. that. I'm totally butchering it, I'm sure. But um, it, it is, I, I think, but but I think our culture calls it lazy or or it's misconstrued for like, what are you doing, dude? Like, why don't you just pick up the tools and get going? Mm -hmm. But we all just think differently. So you have learned how to, like, like now you're like a pretty skilled electrician. You've yeah. learned how to do this craft. Like you, you had to sacrifice some of the ways that you typically think, I imagine. Mm -hmm. But you, you kind of have combined the way that you think as like a, a you know, you're a specific person who thinks only a, 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 a one, one peculiar way. Yeah. You've combined some of that with thinking kind of like what other people would call the right way. Yeah. Like this is how you get the job done, mm -hmm. you know. So it's a, I think a lot of people, a, a lot of people go through that. I think a lot of people yeah. try to, I, I, you know, I always try to say learn how you learn. That That's one of the most important things you can do because yeah. If you are sitting in a classroom and you happen to realize that you're the only one out of 30, 30 other students that like doesn't seem to be focusing or paying attention or mm -hmm. learning the other things that other people are learning, it doesn't mean you're dumb. Mm -hmm. It just means like you maybe you haven't learned the way that you learn. Maybe you need to um, pace the room as you learn. Maybe you need to be listening yeah. to, um, you know, m maybe instead of sitting there and reading a solid book, maybe you're an audio, audio book type of person yeah. and you like to walk around and listen to, listen to that book in your headphones. That's the best, best way to get it. So exactly. I think that, I think that you're like learning, you're, you're learning how to, you know, be true to yourself and be true to your authentic and, yeah. and peculiar and creative way of thinking yeah. like the, the real essence of, of who you are yeah. and accompany that with, you know. Do, doing the right thing and make sure you properly do the job. Like, yeah, you know, exactly. Make sure you do, you the, do the damn thing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. He's just like, you know, there's, like I said, there's like, or like my father-in-law says, there's three ways to do something. Choose the right one, you know, mm -hmm. but make it work. Make it work for you. Yeah. And do it the right way, you know? Mm -hmm. It's like, but you have to have that will. Yeah. You have to want to become better. It's not like when mm -hmm. I got emotional earlier, it's just not like the fact that like I just, I'm just done. It's the fact that I know I can do more. Right. I know I can better myself. Yeah. It's just like, you know. You got emotional because you're hard on yourself. Yeah, like I am. You want to be, yeah. you want to be like good. I, I and know I, just, I can I do better. I just know you, so I know yeah. that. And so it's like, I tell like some of the people that I see, it's like, dude, wh how are you not doing that? Like, why do you not want more? Are you just like, if you're comfortable for being like, doing nothing all day, I mean, that's lazy. Yeah, yeah. When I see how you live, the yeah. way you act, I'm not like trying to judge him, but it's like, dude, you have skills that you don't even know about. Mm. It, it's like, and I know that, or like I said, it's like, if you want, if this makes you happy, 
this is it for you and you've reached your highest point and this is all you want to do, then freaking do it. But yeah. do it the best that you yeah. can, you know? But it, and also, yeah. if, if you know, yeah. if you are doing that thing and you are doing the lazy version, yeah. but you know every day that like, I, I could be doing better. I could be doing a little bit better. And you ignore that. Yeah. It's not going to feel good. That's not how humans work, man. Yeah, it's, like, we, it's we've got to, you've got to be able to, you know, you've got to be able to balance like that feeling of, mm -hmm. and it's not fucking easy by any means. You got to balance that feeling of like, you know, I'm, I'm doing okay, all things considered. You know, mm -hmm. it's been pretty crazy lately, but I'm, I'm doing my best. You got to be able to balance that with, I got to do better. Oh, I got to keep improving, mm -hmm. you know, because the I've got to keep improving puts you innately in a place of, I'm not good enough. Yeah. And so, so that's like, careful, the, yeah, a place like that I like stem from and I'm trying to like block that out. I'm like, yeah. hey, and I need to reflect. I'm like, hey, you're doing better than a lot of people are doing, yeah, bro, you're doing in the fine. world and like a lot of people that i see like people i know it's like struggling yeah. i'm like you know like and i do pre then i start you know it's like almost like a reminder that i'm like dude i'm doing awesome yeah you know it's just like yeah. a little thing it's like when you see things it's like that's when i like i feel bad i'm like what the heck ryan yeah why were you in that like state of mind when you're seeing the situation at hand you're fine you right. need to stop doing that, you know, like, but I'm still hard on myself. I still want to become better. And I'm like, and I just want to, sometimes I just like want to motivate people because people, some people are just like, you know, I'm fine. Like you, you know, you were saying here, I was like, I'm fine. You know, I could be better, but they don't do anything about it, yeah. you know, or they're stuck in a situation, but they're not willing to do the work. Mm. You know, it's, it's, I would have to say everything I experienced in my life. And how I changed over the years and what how I became who I am today. To change, to become better with the mindset. I've always had the, I always made excuses to like, oh, I'll do that later. Or, you know, I don't know, it's because my ADHD or whatever, being lazy, kind of like that. Like, I was lazy back then, but now it's like I, I'm lazy because, you know, I find a better way to do it in a short amount of time mm -hmm. by doing it the right way. Yeah. But now it's like I've changed so much that like I, I couldn't believe I lived that way and me growing to the man I've become today. I just don't understand how people can't do that and which I finally did. It's because the like I connected I connected it to what my dad told me a long time ago. And I was young and I never understood, like, you would tell me things that, like, weird things, little mm. lines. I still remember to this day. That wisdom. That, like, yeah, that wisdom. It's like, man, I'm like, Dad, you're weird, you know? It's like, <laughs> why would you tell me that? Like, I have no idea what but you're talking about. it stuck with It's you, stuck. Yeah. And the line is, he, he told me, he's like, Ryan, when you want to do anything, and it's like, when you want to become better, when you want to do something that your heart desires it doesn't matter if you're capable or not it's the hardest part of doing what you want to do is taking the first step because mm. if you never take that first step you're never going to do it that's it is the simplest line yeah. i've ever heard in my life but it, it got me to be more i guess more courageous over the years after mm. i figured out what that line meant yeah and it's like Man, it's like it can go stem from asking a girl out to trying something new or, you know, eating something new that you never tried before mm. to making the move for, for me going from uh, from Longview all the way down to Vancouver mm -hmm. for this girl to move. That was the biggest step I've ever taken yeah. in my life was to move down to Vancouver, yeah. not knowing anybody but it. her. Yeah. You know, it it's to saying what you want to say, what you want to do at work. You're never trying to lose weight or something. You're never going to do it unless you take the first step. Mm -hmm. And that is the first step, you know, when you're learning how to walk for crying out loud, what's the hardest step? The first one. Mm-hmm. That stuck out like as soon as I figured out what he meant when I got he I think he told me when I was like nine or ten I was so I was like whatever dude you're crazy but now that I like I think I remember that line when I was like 
in my early 20s, that really stuck out. That taught me everything. That, like, got me to actually talk more, be more personable, to be mm. more taking courageous steps that no one would ever take. I'm like, you know, try things out, you know? it's right. You're never going to experience life unless you do it yourself, Yeah, you know? You're never going to figure things out. You're never going to do anything with your yeah. life if you don't take that step. Dude, I, uh, m my friend Bob, Bob Kendall, mm -hmm. he, he said this thing way long ago when I was, uh, I was working at Munition actually, I was probably also working at Mr. Formal, but yeah. he said, uh, you can't win the lottery if you don't buy a lottery ticket. And it was just this <laughs> Someone just thing. said that the other day. And yeah, it, to I, me. Man, it, it has always stuck with me in that same sense. And it really is, yeah. you know, it's, it's just, you know, I was, as you were telling me, like, you know, take that first step. I was just thinking, fucking Nike, man, like Nike, just do it. It you know, it's a slogan we all hear. Three words. Yeah, just do it. it Three really words. It really is like, just just do it. You know, the same thing Yoda said. You know, there is there is no try. You know, you just, just you, you, you do just, or you don't. You do so it, yeah. It's, it's, it really is, th those things can stick with us in, in profound mm -hmm. ways. And isn't that cool to think of like, bro, like think about how many things you're going to give your daughter that you don't realize you're going to give her. Yeah. Like, it, like you could be giving her some casual advice that you don't even think she'll remember. But then in 20 years, she might be with her friend on a podcast being yeah. like, man, my dad said this thing and it's always stuck with me. And you yeah. know, she, she I it hope out. so. It's, it's oh, probably just going to be like dirty jokes or something. It's like, yeah, dude, my dad is just super <laughs> gross. He is fucking inappropriate he, all the time. It's like, you think he would have just these simple dad jokes, but they're just weird and gross. I feel like, okay, <laughs> in, in 20 years, what kind of dad do you think you'll be? You think you'll be like a dorky dad? Me? Like to where, oh, dude. I feel like you'll be dorky. Oh, I'll be a super dorky, nerdy. <laughs> like, my dad Wearing watches- Wearing Air Maxes, mowing the lawn. Yeah, mowing the lawn. Ooh. And then he's like, dude, my dad watches anime. Like, I, that's <laughs> weird. I don't- I don't get it. I'm like, yeah. you'll get it once you learn that leveling up in, in a show is the most crucial thing and you get excited <laughs> and you get off your chair and you stand up on the couch. You're like, let's go. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't know why I still watch anime, but I love it. A lot it. of people watch anime. Yeah. It I is. Mean, it's, it's actually grown, up, grown so much since I've started. It used yeah. to be like this, like stigma of like, oh, you watch anime? That's right. gross. Yeah. Like, but now, it, dude, it's this a, thing that weird people do or something. Yeah, it's but like it's, a nerdy cosplay, blah blah blah. You know, that's not how I think. I just like, dude, the storylines to it are it's the storyline. Yeah, yeah, you're listening to a story be communicated. Yeah. You know, that's that's what entertainment is for us. Is we're listening to again, like we were talking about uh, towards the beginning, or even on that first clip, we were talking about basically, like. As we're speaking, it's not always about just the words. It's not always just about the median. It's about yeah. the message. Yeah. It's about the underlying theme. Like, what what are we communicating? My my friend texted me yesterday, and uh, it, it was Friday night, and I know him. I think he might have been having a couple of drinks. Yeah. He texted me, um, and he basically was was uh, you know, saying like, "Hey, man, you know, I, I want to hang out. We haven't been able to link up for the last couple of weeks. Like, I really miss you. I love you." And then he, and then he was, um, we sent a couple back messages back and forth and he was like, you know, you're my rock, man. Like, I appreciate you. I'm kind of mm -hmm. going through some stuff right now. Um, I, you know, just, he was basically just like, uh, communicating his appreciation. Mm -hmm. And it was just totally, you know, you know, bro, love you moment. And I text him back. I love you too, buddy, whatever. And based off of the words that he was saying, just through a text message, like, like, like I, like you could take it. A, a different way like I, 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 I you could take it if someone else read those words and they don't know either of us or we don't know like the the friendship that we have together yeah um they might be like what are, like what are you guys talking about you're just like saying you love each other through, through the message yeah but what i heard i didn't looking through the words that he sent me themselves looking through that to mm -hmm. my friend communicating with me what i heard was oh, my buddy's having kind of a rough day he just kind of wants to hear that he's loved yeah that's what i heard yeah 100 so i'm like I get that and I hear you and I love you, brother. Like entertainment does that for us a lot of the times oh, too. I that, love that, it. that was my yeah. connection back. But I but know, yeah. Like, like a lot of times we're trying to learn a message about life. We're trying to learn about ourselves. We're trying to learn about, again, you're watching anime, like you're inadvertently learning how to be a better father as you're watching these things. You're oh, like, yeah. how do I, what's the story here? What's the human lesson here that I'm learning from the theme of this show? Mm -hmm. Like that's, dude, all, all these things, like, you know, we, we don't ever talk about it on this level. We talk about it on the surface level. Like, oh, did you like that show? No, it was good. It was bad. 
or yeah. it was dumb or I didn't like the music or the acting was bad or whatever. And it's yeah. like, fuck all that, man. Like what the story, story that's listen speaking to the story. To us. Yeah. Yeah. The theme like, that's speaking yeah. to our heart, you know? Oh yeah. That's, I don't know. I, I that's why I watch anime, dude. They just, they're yeah, to me, it's like there. they, they tell a story and everything is like, you know, obviously it's like all seasons, right? It's like, sometimes they have like, it's one season where it's only like maybe 12 to 24, Sometimes they just make so much, right? But there's some that they make like, like there's one that I'm watching and it's like I'm on episode like 156. Oh my god! Yeah, is it the, One Piece? No, it, dude. That I, one's a long one too. I'd I, I think no, yeah, long. I think they're in the thousands right now. Oh my god, that's so many episodes. Yeah, like I, I. Think about how creative that is, though. I, it like is the, the creators and the the animators yeah. and the writers behind it. Like that's so it's impressive. Cre- yeah, but then it's like some people like so mistakenly like make fun of it, and I'm like okay, and then they turn around. And it's like okay, let's go watch uh, Frozen, a girl that can freeze, uh, <laughs> freeze. It literally has magic, and can freeze things and talking to a goddamn snowman. Yeah. That like, she created with magic. That's okay, but your anime is childish. It's childish. What? Yeah. I was like, okay, so it's, we're going that. Yeah. No, because it's Disney. It's different. I'm like, okay. it's still animation, man. It's <laughs> still different. And guess what? Disney is a multi, what? I want to- Billion, for sure. Billion? 100%. Yeah, they have oh, to. Yeah. They, they, they own they ESPN. Own, yeah. They're own part Marvel. of like what well, Hulu is connected to them now. Because like, yeah. Fox, yeah. Dude. It's all there. They own everything. They own me. Yeah. They own you. Oh, yeah. I have Disney Plus. They own my car. I don't think I own my car. I think Disney owns it. Yeah. You know how many times (laughs) I watched Tangled? (laughs) Oh, dude, you probably watched a lot. Uh, Tangled's like one of actually, Actually, that's a top five for me, actually. Yeah. Tangled, I, dude. Wait till your daughter gets older, too. You're going to be watching these way more often, too. (laughs) Dude, that freaking, uh, every time the song comes up. Okay, I would have to say like uh like the newer. No, I'm not talking about old Disney. I'm talking about new Disney mm-hmm. now. It would have to be like Tangled. Mm-hmm. It's like one of my favorites. It's a really good one. I every time the first song comes on, Katie would always laugh at me because I know every word. <laughs> and, <laughs> yeah, I, I was singing it out loud. Uh, Frozen Two, actually, I thought was better than the first one. There's some I like. The music I thought was better. I've seen two. The two is really good. Is it? Yeah, it's like there's a part where the guy sings in there, and obviously I know every word, and uh, he uh, <laughs> don't tempt me. I'll do it right now. Oh, dude. Uh, <laughs> but um, he sings, but like the the way like the way the song is, it's like um they weren't making fun of it, but it was a uh, well, yeah, they kind of make fun of, of it. Parody. But it was like like an eighties. A weird '80s like look on, like, or in his situation, it was like an '80s music video, mm. like a really soft and like he's speaking his heart out kind of thing. But it was definitely like the way they did it was like '80s, okay, like okay. late '70s, early '80s, like the way they did it. And I yeah. laughed so hard that I love the song. It made me love the song and I memorized it. I was like, dude, and yeah. then Katie, everything I've learned because she watches a lot of Disney uh, movies, I stopped after like the 90s because like, I'm like, that's all the best movie. Like, dude, Goofy movie. Oh, that was legendary, uh, Goofy bro. Movie, dude. That was a good movie. Oh my gosh, dude. All I wanted to do is become Powerline. Like, I that, <laughs> I don't, as a kid when I was, I was like, dude, I would, I still from this day, I, when Katie puts it on for me, because she knew that was my favorite, I I can re or I can say all the words. I can. <laughs> it's in there. I, it's in. I know in every life. single line. I know all the songs. It yeah. doesn't matter. I can. I can literally just recite the whole movie for you. I love that movie so much. Till this, like that's the song that you played when we walked out on our wedding. Was uh, it is too? I, actually, I to eyes, right. dude. Yeah, yeah. Dude, dude. Goofy oh, movie yeah, was I one of those that. underrated movies i i feel like because not a lot of people know the songs i guess i don't know i just i connected to that movie as a kid so much yes so good can can i just say i'm gonna completely change the subject can i just say that the fact that you had a band at your wedding was so dope like shout out to bands oh um yes yeah like i that was that was good as a dj like 
I don't want to DJ at the wedding. <laughs> like, no. I, I, I don't know. Like, I, I don't know. I mean, I don't, I, I've DJed quite a few weddings and they're just not my like favorite thing to do. Yeah. You know, they're great. They're, they're great money. It's great mm-hmm. to be a part of it. Um, but I, I don't know. There's just something about a band, man. I, I found myself dancing way more with, with isn't the band. it weird? Yeah, I, you feel like you're more connected, right? Yeah, I, really I didn't liked think it so much. I more. did not think that having a band there, because in my head, when I think about a band, I was thinking about a bar. They would just yeah. uh, play they're like just playing play, in the background. Yeah, they're just playing in the background. They're just yeah. playing old music. Oh man, we were but, all dancing our butts off. Yeah, because it's like they were playing the songs. That when we all get drunk at the bar, yeah, those are the songs we're dancing yeah. to, and we're yelling on top yeah. of our lungs. Well, and they put like a funk vibe to everything. Like, yeah, you know, the, everything, everything had a solid bass line. The drums mm-hmm. were hitting, you know, like in in the the singer yeah. had a great voice too. And yeah, um, yeah, because the singer like and, and then the girl, like, or the singer is has a twin sister, and she huh. can play the guitar and she can play drums or something like that. Excellent. Yeah, but like they're twins and they both can sing. But the at our wedding, it was mostly the one girl that sang, and the other one was like I think playing drums. And every now and again, I think she was playing like the bass or something like that. Mm-hmm. Something was happening. I can't remember. It was a lot of things were happening in that wedding. But I just remember watching the band like at a bar, and I was like, oh, okay. And I was still like, whatever. But when when they were playing and everyone was on the dance floor, yeah. when I was trying to dance my best because of when I, <laughs> um, I uh, my Achilles. I yeah. ruptured my Achilles. Yeah, you had an injury. yeah. Didn't, right didn't before we get you the, on the chair. Or something? Yeah, get yeah. my. Yeah, I almost fell. By the way, <laughs> I don't. I I try not to think about it. it. I was like, "Holy crap, you guys! Had, this is I didn't know this was a Jewish wedding." Yeah, we had to bar mitzvah for that shit. Uh, to, yeah, it carried me, <laughs> and I tough, I was holding on to dear life. By the way, I'd scared the <laughs> shit out of me. Oh man, that I was, was like, really dude, if though. I fall, that that's a re-injury right there. I'm just getting healed up. Yeah. I f- already feel bad. I was wearing a boot. Yeah. At our wedding. But I was like, dude, things happen. Yeah. I think that yeah, has to be. Yeah, you got to roll with things, man. But you're right, dude. Yeah. That having a band, I will tell you this right now, whoever's still made it this far after our whole COVID to my emotional <laughs> cry to finally talking about some funny stuff. But having a band and not a DJ, not saying anything about you, Jake. Fuck, fuck DJs. Yeah. Just I kidding. would have to. I would recommend hiring a really good band that can play every because they played every yeah, type of music yeah. and the yeah, way they, they played, played it was stuff. perfect. Yeah, because it wasn't very like upbeat, yeah, very um, upbeat, and and they kept the, I don't know, they just kept the momentum. Where it's not like you're standing there watching a concert. It mm-hmm. was the hey, they're playing music that we can dance to, and we don't give a shit about the band, but they're just playing music. Yeah, that we like to dance. It was every song. Yeah. From it was they played seventies, eighties, nineties music. Now mm-hmm. I mean, because I know they played "Funk You Up," and I'm like, dude, you guys killed it. <laughs> Are did. you kidding me? Yeah. And they, I mean, it's like a band playing that. Yeah. Y- you're not. You're not gonna get that. I mean, Ooh, I guess it we, was groovy too. Oh, it was. It was like every cover they did was just good too. Like yeah. I, I think I would enjoy. Like even if it wasn't, you know, my good friend's wedding, I think I would just. I'd really enjoy, yeah. even if I was, I was at a place where I was just kind of having a beer, listening to them, where it wasn't like a dance place. Mm-hmm. Oh, I would totally enjoy yeah. that. So. Yeah, because like the place that we saw them, because you know, like, well, from here, you know, I, I, I guess I was like accustomed to where when you were just listening to a bar band, you're not gonna go out there and dance. You're just gonna listen to them, right? Right. When I first saw that band, when uh, Katie's parents were talking about. Like, oh, we should get a band. I'm like, I don't know. I That'd be kind of cool, I guess. I don't know. I never really saw like a band where you can just get grooved to or whatever, but yeah. I saw them live. And I kid you not when like we were waiting for them to play, right? It was like uh, Billy Blues in Vancouver. That's where they played at. That's where we saw them. And they were regulars there that, that play. And, you know, you got the people. It's like a, like an older crowd, too. And people would be dancing and stuff. But as soon as that band came on, because they, they look like they're around my age or maybe a little bit older. Yeah. I think the twins are like my age. But when they came on, there was not one seat that was still, like a butt was sitting there. Oh, everybody got I, I'm up. I'm telling you, I everyone came up out oh, of man. their seats and started. It was they a did their job whole bar. Well I've then. never seen a whole wow. bar get up and just start dancing. Like, and they're, yeah. and they they weren't just playing like old music. Like I said, they were playing new music of now. And I'm yeah. telling you, like people my parents' age 
were sing singing because they played Love Funk it. You Up. Yeah. And uh, I was like, dude, why this old guy? Like, like had to be like maybe 57, 56, in his late 50s. He sang out every freaking uh, word. I was like, what groovy. is happening right now? I was right. like, okay, I get it. I want them at our wedding. Let's book them, yeah. Book, book them and... Like you saw at our wedding, man. Every everyone's out of their seat. Great time. Yeah, it was good. That yeah. I, you know, and you never. I've been to a lot of weddings, like a lot, and a lot of people don't dance. Yeah, you know, unless they're super drunk and they're the guy that walks out to the dance floor with a wine bottle in their hand, trying to grind up on somebody. <laughs> not talking about myself in the Unbutton past. Unbutton shirt more. I takes off shirt. Swear, wears vest only. I'm not talking about myself, but at our wedding. Dude, I don't know. I just had a really good time. It was like one of the best weddings. Not like to brag, <laughs> but dude, that was a good wedding. I, that I, was I had fun. a great time. I, I had yeah. a good time. That was, yeah, that was a good. Do you remember the name of the band? Like, did, did they have a. No, but I'll send you the text or I'll, okay. I'll text you like the what the band was called. Okay. I know. I know. I just well, figured shout yeah. them out, you know. Nowadays, oh, I wish. Ba bands aren't working nowadays. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. Like, all the bands, all the people who used to play, anybody who works in the gig industry yeah. has not been doing Anything. what they've. But trying I think, to do for the rest of the, for the yeah. last, you know. Yeah, it sucks, dude. But if you actually, if you go, I think if you go to, to Billy Blues, they they have a website for mm. that bar, and they usually have a line. They used to have a, I don't know about now, but they had the lineup and like the dates people are playing and stuff like that. Um, if you go look on there, mm -hmm. if you ch search through the bands and if you see two twins singing, and they have, it's weird because on the website you see a video of them playing. Like a show mm. there, and it's like not just like a recording of one spot, and they're just seeing them play. It's like a like someone made this video to Official look like. Video, yeah, yeah, I was like, what the heck? Nice. See, that's what you got to do today. Yeah, like nowadays. you have to, and yeah. yeah, because they they're really good. Yeah. I mean, I I watched them actually after our wedding. I watched them play, and they were playing for free. Um, which you know, obviously they were play for free unless you book them. Um, yeah. they were playing at the casino. They played for like. Uh, two and a half hours at the casino mm. and yet again watching those people yeah. out there on the like everyone at at the dance floor I was like you guys are are you here for the band or are you, I'm I'm here for gambling yeah. and I ended up watching them for an hour yep that's that's how I, I was like be. oh damn it dude I, I love letting your ear catch you and mm -hmm. then it's like damn we're just gonna check like who the heck are these guys yeah you know? it's well because like yeah they're really good singers yeah. the, the twins are yeah yeah well it, it was enjoyable I, en I enjoyed your wedding I enjoyed the band Man, and I great. feel like uh there ever comes a time in my life where I get married. I don't know that I'll get married. We'll see. But well, I think I'm definitely I told not going to have a that. DJ. But I, told myself I know. I, I yeah, you can't really uncle. plan it. right? Like right now, obviously, it doesn't fit into my life even halfway right now. Uh -huh. So it, it's just it's not going to work out in that way for me. But Oh, remember when I told you about that meme earlier and I said I was going to tell you about what Katie told or sent me was that uh, you know you're doing good when you're... Uh, when your husband from fifth, like for fifteen years, used to be the 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 high school druggie, and now is downstairs cooking eggs for your daughter, and oh. I, she sent me that, and I was like, <laughs> "Damn, that was really harsh," but that is so freaking true. Because the yeah. other that because the other day I uh, she I let Katie sleep in, and I woke up because baby woke up, got her out, and she loves eggs, and I was cooking her dinner. You know, or cooking her uh, breakfast, and uh, you know, I was making her. She loves eggs, and I was getting some eggs, made some French toast for her. She just like you know, cutting up, cutting them up, and then yesterday, and that was like a couple weeks ago, and she sent me that yesterday, and it just made me laugh. I'm uh, like, made me laugh, and then made me a little like that hurt a little God bit. Damn, but yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. I used it. to be the druggie, okay, I get it. Yeah. You know, I'm now I'm always I barely drink. This is probably the most beers I've drank in a long time. Oh, actually, oh yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, we were just talking about it. like it's a yeah just. How life goes, man. Yeah. We've had plenty of beers together when we were young, but yes, we did. Just, I mean, we had a you lot go out more of it together. And it becomes a more special, <laughs> special time thing, and yeah. like now we get a, I don't know, it, it, it makes things more of a special occasion. It's, it's fun. It's, yeah. it's nice. I, I enjoy it. Oh, I every time I you give me a text, I I light up, and then she's like, yeah. Katie's like, who are you texting? Why are you smiling? Like. <laughs> it's, Jake. it's Jake. It's Jake. It's Jake. It's Jake. He's texting me. He be a be on a podcast. Bye bye. I gotta go. Bye bye. Gotta go. Gonna be on a podcast. Yeah. Oh, can I get a ride? Yeah. Can I get a ride? Yeah. Um. Uh. 
Okay, dude, it's uh, we're getting pretty up here in time, and mm-hmm. the old wifey will be here to pick you up shortly. Yes. So, uh, firstly, I just want to say I appreciate you, buddy. Thank you so much. No, Thank I you appreciate for coming you. Over. It was great to catch up. It's, it's always great to talk. Yeah, it's always good. I appreciate good. you, uh, you know, being willing to be vulnerable and, like, just talk about real shit, too. You yeah. Know, it's, it's I hard. can't we, wait we for it. people to see me cry, because I was actually oh. going to say during the podcast, I'm like, dude, ever since I took my medication, I haven't, like, been emotional. And oh, I was really? like, dude, it like cut off my emotional thing. But for oh, some reason, when I talked about that thing, because I yeah. think, well, it sparked it. Yeah. It, it just, yeah, because I don't talk about that kind of stuff. And I don't know why I talked about it now. Yeah, we just, we, we kept leading into that. Yeah, right? it we did. Kept, it just, just, oh man, I didn't mean, like, once I, well, when I get with you, I freaking talk about things. I don't, I don't even <laughs> talk about my wife. I'm just like, dude, I'm solid, man. Yeah. I, emotions, pff, what is that? Yeah. And then, yeah, that just like came out, and I guess that was like just pent up emotion that built up. Well, I'm I'm glad you were able yeah. to let it out as a normal human, man. I'm yeah. glad you're. I only you cry in front of my in, my guy in, friends, in a man. Safe, in a safe spot. Yeah, oh, I'm always in a safe safe spot with you, dude. Oh, good man. Yeah. Glad to hear that. I feel safe with you too, buddy. Thanks. I appreciate you. So thank <laughs> you for doing this, and let's end with one last question. Mm-hmm. Given the choice, ooh, to fight 100 normal sized bats. Uh-huh. Or one giant horse size bat. Oh, dude, I always go for the hard one. That's uh What's I would go one? I would think the horse size bat can still fly too, by the way. Yeah, exactly. Dude, if anything, um it's from an anime, actually. And this old guy in the anime always said when I play video games, I always turn it up to the hardest level. Yeah. You know why? in the whatever he's talking to this kid and this whole situation happening and he's like it's because that's how life is there's no easy mode in life mm. and that's how i treat every every situation i play in hard mode and i was like holy crap dude that hit me on so many levels so right. everything i do now life is a game, from that it? you know i will always be fighting a giant horse bat you, or okay, a, you're going to go for horse, the giant horse Okay. Size bat. Yeah. I would. That's the hard I'm one. I'm going, yeah. Oh, I'm going. Oh, man. Yeah. I feel like a horse sized bat would whoop your ass, right? And honestly, it but probably would eat me for sure. But, you know, I would have your back. I think the two of us together, I think we could take out a horse sized bat. Oh, I, I'm sure. But the I fact can. that he flies, like, hopefully it's not nighttime because then he's really got one up on us and he's using like fucking sonic sound waves to. I mean, well, it, it all depends on like what kind of bat. Is it like a fr- fruit bat? Like the ones that only eat fruit? I mean, I don't know. Just because he eats fruit, but it like maybe he's harmless because he eats fruit. But if he's fucking huge, maybe he's suddenly like maybe his or is his it the one that changes? Yeah, or or is it the one? Do you want to pick the one that like actually licks or eats blood? Because what it does it turns into Dracula. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but there's a type of bat that actually flies around and um goes to horses or right. uh, any type of animal, big animal, they do a little slit that where the animal doesn't know and they yeah. actually drink the blood of that animal. That's crazy. There's actually. a bat like that. I'm pretty, I'm, I don't know. I'm really into, when I was a kid, I was into discovery and reading books of yeah. animals and I know more than you should know about animals and the names of them. And I can't remember, for some reason I can't, I used to know that one because that stuck with me. I'm like, that's super freaking gross. And, yeah, and that's where actually that's where the whole turn not the whole turning the vampire thing, but like a little bit of that was because of that bat was into that story of vampires and everything. Uh, yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Well, ho- hopefully the bat that you have to fight is not one of the blood sucking ones. Just a fruit one, because if it, it is, if it is, then that, it's not really hard mode after that, because all you have to do is gi- throw a giant fruit <laughs> you or a, him. Bu- <laughs> a bucket of like avocados. Like here you go. You just and, assume that the bat is going to be completely ignoring you because you throw some apples. <laughs> uh, uh, here you go, and Please then after even... that we're best friends. It's mm-hmm. like not even a fight mode anymore. It's um, I just I have a best friend, a new one, and it's a. <laughs> Or size bat. bat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Do you think Katie would approve if you brought home a pet horse size bat? I don't think so. Well, we'll see. We'll, mm. we'll catch this one. It, like it purrs a little bit. Yeah. It's like kind of like it's a cute. cat, but it can fly. Yeah. It's like a giant mouse with wings. And by giant, I mean it's the size of a horse. Yeah. Don't worry, it, wife. It, you'll, it, you'll love him. <sighs> Give him a name before you introduce him to Katie, mm-hmm. because then oh, if you he has him? a name, you know, she's going to be like, what? You're gonna be like, what? You're really going to, you're going to make me just leave Henry outside? 
<laughs> Henry, <laughs> Henry Paul, you're gonna leave Henry Paul just outside. Henry Paul the bat. Yeah. Oh my gosh, that'd be so. That, now I'm thinking about that. That's the most ridiculous thing I've ever thought of. I never thought of a situation where a horse <laughs> size bat ever in my life. Now you have. Now it's something you got to deal with. And if it ever comes up in your real life or in virtual reality world when we get there, yeah, you're gonna be like, well, shit. I um, might have to get that, like a tattoo of that. A horse size bat. It's yeah. got to be across your whole back, though. It's got to be your entire back. And how am I supposed to represent that it is like a horse size? You got to put a banana next to it that's actual regular size banana. <laughs> <laughs> so I have to do a comparison. First of all, yeah, you when, have you ever seen a banana, banana next to a horse? <laughs> All right, man. I appreciate you. We'll leave it on that note. Okay. L listeners, <laughs> take care of yourselves. Much love to y'all. Oh, uh, remember yes. that you're human. Remember that you go through this same whole crazy thing as everybody else. We're all brothers and sisters through this. Yes. Uh, we're we're all we're all in the madness of everything that's going on right now. We're all in it together. So remember to be compassionate. Remember to be kind. Remember to be nice to yourself. Be gentle to yourself. And. Uh, we're all going to get through whatever we're going through together. Sounds good. That's awesome exit. Yeah. Peace nice. out. Much Peace. love. Bye. Conversations with ourselves. Knowledge is power. Reality is...